You can absolutely feel the tension in the air here at the Leduc Curling Club. Good afternoon. I'm Jackie Ray Greening along with Jerry Wilson, and we are at the final game of the 1992 Labatt's Provincial Men's Curling Championship. Jerry, when you walked in the rink, you knew today was a special day. The, the downstairs in Leduc here is full. The upstairs, we got people out on the ice. And with Kevin Martin taking on Michael Vavrick, we're in for a barn burner, I think. You sure, certainly can feel the electricity here. And when you talk about the past six years, the Alberta champion, four of them have gone on to win Canadian champions. Eddie Lukowicz, Pat Ryan twice, and Kevin Martin last year. And twice, Eddie Lukowicz and Pat Ryan have gone on to, er, to win world championships. So not only are they playing for the opportunity to, to win Alberta, but the opportunity to go on and win a world champions, become the best in the world. That's right. Alberta definitely has a great record at the Labatt uh, Briar, which this year is going to be held in Regina in March. And uh, either team winning today, they are so evenly matched. Uh, it doesn't matter if Martin wins or Vavrick. We will have a great representative. And they both deserve to be here. Kevin Martin throughout the week, 6-1, and one, playing very well. He lost the one game to Donnie Walchek, but after that, he absolutely shut the door down on all his opponents, and that's why he's here. Michael Vavrick losing two out of his first three games, but turned it on for the rest of the week, and that's why here he won with three big playoff games. That's right, and as we look at the statistics right now, Jerry, uh, from yesterday's semi-final matchup here, uh, the big key was the seventh end when Vavrik uh, kicked a field goal, and uh, was, it was an exciting game, though it came right down to Last Rock, and we'll take a look at that Last Rock now, and uh, I still think this is w probably one of the most gutsy calls of the week. Uh, we were all calling the intern hit, but Mike didn't hesitate at all. Well, looking at two, this is a game shot. If he misses it, Morissette goes on to the final. But he's been confident with his draw weight all week. And we'll take a look at it right here as he slides into the house. And he is right there. On the money for the big win. And that's why he's here today. That's right. And it was a, just an exciting shot. And the crowd just loved it. Everybody upstairs afterwards just saying, uh, you know, he just didn't hesitate. Put the broom down saying, no, nah, I got my draw weight, which he has all week. He's had the draw weight in the back pocket. Uh, it's going to be Michael Vavrick. He uh, represents the Grand Prairie Curling Club going against Kevin Martin of the Avenir. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, statistics from yesterday's game, uh, the percentages, and uh, a very well curled game. After three ends, as you can see, Vavrick was shooting 100%. And uh, uh, just uh, it was a simple game except for a few wins. That's why you do get the high percentages like you do see there. And uh, that was uh, no problem at all. Michael Vavrick beating Frank Morissette of Calgary in that game. And there it is for the uh, statistics for the final team averages after the round robin play. Kevin Martin uh, consistent all week, his team. They all finished atop the standings. Very consistent. And when you talk about Dan Petrick at 93%, that doesn't leave a lot of room for error. That definitely sets it all up very well. And uh, why not right now, let's take a look at the two teams that will be playing today. Jerry? Yes, the Canadian champion, Kevin Martin. T manager of Thompson Brooms. Kevin Park, the third for the Kevin Martin rink, owner of his own restaurant. Dan Petrick, second occupation curler. And Don Bartlett, a postal clerk. And that's a look at the Kevin Martin rink, the Canadian champions. And here with Kevin Martin is Jackie. Thanks very much, Jerry. Uh, yesterday, Kevin, you had a day off. Uh, tell us what you did yesterday. Uh, I came here. We threw a few rocks and watched the game. Went back and uh, watched the last five on, uh, on the TV at home and relaxed. You obviously know Vavrick very well. You've played him many times over over the years. Uh, are you going to play him any different than you have all this week? Oh, definitely not. No, I played him the same um, every time. We've played him in the in the playdowns. Of course, fields are a little different, but uh, I think uh, there's never been a score more than four for either team um, all the times we've played. So very evenly matched. Now, you said in the Northerns in Camrose that uh, it's finally nice to play a game that means something. And uh, obviously now it's all come to this, and it means something to you. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to get back to Regina or get back to the bar would be a great thing, yeah. I know it, uh, a feeling going in. I think it's a big advantage for a team that has been there before because you've tasted it, and Labatt's puts on such an incredible week, and, and, and it makes you want to get there all the more, I would think. Oh, definitely, and that's the uh, first thing last year that Hector uh, you know, talked to me about was that uh, 
you know, if you do get through it once, you really want to get back twice, and that's true. And we're uh, we're really uh, we're really going to be uh, gunning this game. I know we threw at the Avenir Curling Club this morning, our team, and uh, everybody from the Avenir, our home club, wishes you all the best and good luck today. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jack. Kevin Martin, our defending Canadian champion. And now we are going to take a look at our defending team for uh, Martin is Michael Vavrick. And here is Michael Vavrick, 26-year-old farmer from Sexsmith, curling out of the Grand Prairie Curling Club. 28-year-old Kirk Balderson, six trip to the provincial. Farmer from the Sexsmith area. Ralph Buss, second. Third provincial sales representative for Great Rest Life. And Daniel Lemieux, 32-year-old, works for the city of Grand Prairie. And that's a look at the Michael Vavrick team. And with Michael Vavrick is Jackie Ray. Michael, you had three games Friday, a, a couple of games yesterday, uh, all important games. Uh, how does the team feel going into today's final? Well, yesterday night we were a little bit tired, but uh, a couple hours sleep, we were, we're right pumped up again. You have played Kevin Martin enough uh, in your curling career, uh, right uh, stemming back to juniors, uh, and you're so evenly matched. Do you think you have any change of strategy going into this game? Uh, it, all, it all stems down who's going to miss first, and it uh, usually comes out to be the end of the, the game if a guy misses a half shot here and there, and they get a deuce on us, or we get a deuce on them, peel them out or whatever. But it, it's going to be a well-played game. I think everybody's going to be ready to play good. Uh, Martin, uh, because of uh, finishing atop the round robin, has the last rock advantage. Uh, he's basically won the coin toss as a result. Do you think that has any effect on the way you'll play the first few ends? Not really. We've been uh, without the hammer for the last three games now, and we kind of got used to it, I think. And uh, it takes a little bit of pressure off the, the guy flipping the coin, too, or the guy that's calling it and getting it wrong. But uh, it's one of those things. you got to go out there and think, hey, we're going to keep him down to one or get our deuce when we have the chance. Uh, you were saying how your team throws uh, 90 rocks a day, so obviously the uh, the physical aspect of the game is there. It all comes down to mental now for this final game, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, we're kind of prepared physically, but, you know, when you got to go to that final game, you got to be prepared uh, to, to keep your mind in the game and not get uh, your mind wandering here and there. And But uh, I think we're going to be ready, seeing that we've been to a couple of big major cash fields and uh, provincials last year as well. Well, I know a lot of people drove up from Grand Prairie after you won uh, yesterday's semifinal. You got a lot of cheering section, so best of luck this afternoon. Thanks, Jackie. Michael Vavrick taking on Kevin Martin in today's final at the 1992 Provincial Men's Curling Championship. We'll be back with the final game right after this. The Northern Alberta Curling Association is proud to host the 1992 Alberta Labatt Tankard. The NACA provides the following services to the curlers in Northern Alberta. Management of playdowns, promotion of curling, education in the sport, administration functions. NACA, a curling tradition since 1918. Pepsi is a proud sponsor of the Alberta Tankard, and 1992 marks the 35th year of Pepsi support for curling in Canada, including the Pepsi Juniors from provincial and territorial playdowns, right up to the national championships being held this year in Vernon, B.C. This is the longest-running corporate sponsorship in any amateur sport in Canada. In 1992, Pepsi is also a proud sponsor of Team Canada, who will compete in Albertville, France. Pepsi, gotta have it. Hi, once again, everybody, from the beautiful Leduc Curling Club. It's boiled down to a sudden death. Once again, everybody, from the beautiful Leduc Curling Club, it's boiled down to a sudden-death final for the right to represent Alberta in this year's Labatt's Briar to be held in Regina, Saskatchewan. The Mike Vavrick rink of Grand Prairie and the Kevin Martin rink from the Avenir Curling Club in Edmonton, the defending Labatt's Briar champions. Wes Montgomery, along with former world champion, former Briar champion, former provincial champion, former potato farmer, Heck Gervais. You ready to go today? Happy Groundhog Day, by the way. I know. I seen my shadow this morning, and I went right back to bed. <laughs> I heard you saw your shadow, and we get six more weeks of bad curling, is what I thought. Well, it can't get any better than this, Hector, for today. 
Well, you know, the percentages for the whole week uh, have been very close, and uh, the Kevin Martin team were on top at 89%. Uh, not far behind is Mike Vavrick at 82%. Every, every one of Martin's team outcurled every one of uh, Vavrick's team in the round robin, but that's all a win right now. There's a brand new ball game starting right now. The only advantage that Kevin has is last rock, and uh, you know if he doesn't have a chance to, to take that advantage, uh, he's going to have a lot of trouble with this team. They've been going very well. Well, I like Con Krakowski's uh, right up the way he started today in the Evan and Sun. He quoted Yogi Berra, it's deja vu all over again. It's always bothered me that I understood Yogi Berra and understood Con Krakowski, but these players have been there before. The runner-up from last year and the guy that represented Alberta so well in the briar, Kevin Martin, the man that beat him. And play is underway here at the Leduc Curling Club and the lead of the very fine Mike Babrick team has put his first one right in the house and the show is on. A little different from last year is that Mike Babrick would have had to beat Kevin Martin twice when they played because uh, they had the old format where you had to uh, A, B, and C and, uh, and today it's a sudden death so you know it's it's a big game when any, any game that comes down to a sudden death is a big one and uh, you know one mistake by one of these teams and it could be all over. Well, that's Don Bartlett spread out all over the ice with his intern. And he hits and rolls toward the side, and that's about where they wanted to go, and that's going to hang around, and Don Bartlett opens up in fine fashion. <coughs> Don, of course, and all members of the Kevin Martin team uh, led all week long in presenters at their respective positions, and, of course, uh, they had the best team average of all the eight teams that started play last Tuesday night. Well, one thing for sure, Wes, that... Uh, the last time these two played, uh, Mike Maverick uh, shook hands when he was three down going into eight, and uh, he uh, lost seven to four, uh, four, four to one, three-point difference. And I'll guarantee you he won't be quitting today when he's three down unless it's uh, the last end. Well, he quit on that occasion, and he made a wise decision because he knew at that point, the way the Martin Rink were going, his chances of getting the three points back at three ends were slim and none, and he knew he was in a playoff again that night, might have to play the next morning, play again in the afternoon. He was absolutely right. He won those three games, and here he is against Kevin Martin with a chance to go and represent the province in the briar. Here is Don Bartlett. He's just going to try and throw up a corner guard. I told Kevin last night, I said, I hear from the odds maker at these curling things, uh, Ken the Greek Hunka, uh, that he was an eight to five favorite and the over and under was six and a half for this game. He says, get all the money you can on over because I'm going to start throwing up corner guards right off the bat. So. Well, he is, but he does, he's doing it at the right time. He has last rock and sometimes you don't get a chance to put that corner guard up if the opposition has one in, in play. And, you know, it's a good policy. That's one way of getting more than one point. And out comes the second man of the Mike Babbert team, Ralph Brust. We have to get Brust right today. You and I really, I think we call him everywhere from Bruce to Brute, anything. It's Ralph Brust. I thought I was saying it was you that was saying Brust. <laughs> well, we got Ralph right. That's pretty good for you and I. Well, Kevin could come around this one. He's playing it, uh, you know, they're going to play it pretty simple I think the first uh, couple three ends and uh, you know when you got the advantage like Kevin has uh, it's kind of crazy to take too many chances well here's the hit man from Smoky Lake out with his in turn an incredible 93 percent average through the round robin competition he's got the rock rolls over to the side and that's just where Skip Martin wanted it you can hear the crowd down a nice level this will be our biggest crowd down there we have the the quiet knowledgeable fans down the nice level we've got the rowdy arsenio hall crowd back up here in the clubhouse with us here again today <laughs> and they'll get louder as the game goes on out comes ralph rust again with that in turn he'd like to hit this rock and roll toward the middle of the house if he possibly could he's got the inside of the rock whether he got too little of it we'll just have to wait and see going toward the back of the 12 foot and kevin thinks it's going all the way and doesn't bother with it at all. Well, he's only 24 years old, Ralph. Rust? Rust. Oh, okay. You get us in trouble again today, Hector. <laughs> he uh, not only uh, curls very well, but he, uh, he's he got his uh, level one and two in, in uh, coaching for Crow Canada, and that's uh, kind of a nice thing to have. You can help out kids. You can help out anybody that wants some help, and uh, he's got a certificate for the one and two level. 
He's a great collegiate curler, and that's where he met Kevin Martin. He actually played for Kevin for a couple of years after they got out of college, and they did very well. I know this Laverick team have won uh, some money this year. They won uh, a big uh, spiel in Hay River at the end of last year. They won uh, another spiel in Kamloops, a uh, big spiel that a lot of the competitors go to, and then he came second in the Smithers spiel and did beat Kevin in the first game of the uh, uh, playoff that uh, a couple of months ago. Well, these teams have met each other plenty in the last couple of years, and uh, Kevin has a slight edge, of course, but all the games were close, and as Kevin mentioned in the opening interview, uh, none of the teams have really got any more than four points in any game. That's how close they are. Here's Kurt Balderson with his first stone. Hits it on the outside and rolls off. And pretty squeaky clean here in the first end, and that could very well be the story for the whole game. Well, you know, the percentages for the uh, week on leads was uh, Lamorex was 86% uh, was to 91 for Don Bartlett. Uh, Brust was 84 to 93 for Patrick. And Ballerson was 84%, 90, 89 for uh, Kevin, Kevin Park, and 75 for Vavrick, and 83 for Martin. So in all positions, they were outcurled uh, for percentage-wise in a seven-game series. And of course, as I said earlier, this is all uh, nothing to do with that anymore. It's a brand new ball game. Here's the restaurant tour from uh, Linda and Kevin's in the Otwell Shopping Center, who's never there because he's always curling Kevin Park trying to put up that corner guard again. Gotta be tight to the house. Come on, hurry. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, keep her coming. Keep her coming. And it looks like it's just gonna be perfect. Quick. Right up, that's good. Now this is a good good way of skipping, you know. He has last rock, even if the opposition decides to come around you. This is exactly how Kevin got a two-ender in the first game. As they left the one on the side, they came into the rings. And then uh, Kevin Park hit it on the nose. Kurt Balson rolled out, and then Kevin pa Kevin dro uh, drew around it and got a two-ender. So it's uh, uh, I'm surprised that he's leaving it there again. Well, it makes for an interesting first end right off the bat. I hope they have that same philosophy each and every end. It's going to make a better game for us, a better game for the crowd. Get some rocks in play. All right, Kurt Balson's a farmer in the Sexsmith area. He's drilled for 14 years and. Uh, He's been in six different times for a young man that's uh, only 28 years old, playing uh, third and skipped his own a couple times, and uh, so he's had a lot of experience at this level. So Kevin Martin is going to ask his third man, Kevin Park, with the out turn to come down and hit that rock belonging to Mike Fabric and roll all the way across the house, hopefully in behind that red rock. Well, you know, the ice is so good here at the uh, Duke Curling Club that... Uh, there's not many open shots are uh, missed by these teams, and uh, they pretty much have to get around and uh, bury behind something to get more than one point. Very neat, the ice maker here at the Leduc Curling Club from a long line of ice making knees. I saw him at the, after the banquet last night at the Elks Hall. You'd think you'd get enough curling out here at his own club. Here's Kevin, we'll describe the shot and tell you more about Barry Knees nightlife. He's not going to get the roll the way he wanted. He gets the roll and rolls the other way and out of play. But Barry, last night, you took off early. Helen, your wife, fortunately took you out of there before you got in trouble. But the rest of us stayed around and enjoyed each other's company. And Barry, I met his wife. He was going from the dance last night to Devon to watch his wife curl at midnight last night. Now, where do you get that kind of stamina from? Not even you, when you were younger, could handle that. I should mention right now that uh, for this game, Kevin Martin has agreed to have the wireless mic on, but again, as yesterday's semifinal, Mike Vavrick will uh, not wear the microphone. He's on a roll. Might be, uh, he's a little uncomfortable with it. So was Frank Morris that said he, he, they were conscious of those microphones on. It wasn't that they were scared of anything they were gonna see or wanted to be uncooperative, but they were conscious of the mics on, on and would rather uh, not wear them. I think the fact that they both lost the games when we did them during the week <laughs> I think so too, might have something to do with it. <laughs> oh, and uh, Mike Ravick's trying to make sure you get in, into the house so uh, Kevin can't use that corner guard, and uh, he's just putting it right on the four-foot circle if he can and hope that uh, Kevin doesn't get a roll. Like to get in the back of the house, right, Hector? So the no reduces roll. the chance of a roll and he's got it back of the tee line and that's a an excellent shot curlers are really superstitious a lot of them i think Did you, were you superstitious when you were going well oh yes i uh, i'd uh, wear sometimes the same clothes and uh do you remember those shorts i was telling you about <laughs> wore the same shorts for 10 straight years yeah. for shoes <laughs> shoes too 
<laughs> I, uh, I had a pair of shoes for 22 years and lost them and figured I couldn't curl again. And the next year I made up a pair of hush puppies and won the briar. So uh, <laughs> all that. Uh, yeah. Looking back, nothing, yeah. looking back, you could have changed your shorts earlier too, I suppose. <laughs> Boy, I'll be glad when this day's <laughs> over. <with. laughs> All right, here's Kevin Martin. Here's the champ right here. The defending 1991 Labatt's Briar champion would love to get back there again and get another shot at the world championship. Here he comes with the intern. That smooth delivery of his. Uh, he certainly has the rock. He's going to try and roll it to the left and get behind that one. He's not going to roll far enough. He hits and stays little movement on that intern. Yes. They waited a long time, and uh, it made a move, and it was gone. Well, important that he stayed in the pl in the house, too. If he had rolled out, uh, uh, Mike uh, Vavrick could have tried and bury behind uh, one of those guards and forced Kevin to draw for one. There comes Mike Vavrick, the fine young curler from Grand Prairie. He's a veteran at 26 years of age. Finished third in this competition a couple of years ago. Was runner-up last year. Would like to take it one step further. If he possibly could. They're still talking about that last rock that he threw yesterday in the semifinal. Ignoring two rocks by Frank Morissette in the eight-foot circle and calmly throwing an outturn. Covered the button. No sweeping. That's the second time it's happened this week. And he uh, told Morissette before Morissette threw his last one he was going to do it. So... Uh so he's pretty confident. confident. So he said, no matter what you play, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw. He's trying to roll behind that red rock. I don't think it moved quite enough. He's awfully close. Kevin Parks got it and takes it right to the boards, and we will have a blank end here on the first end of the 1992 Labatt Tankard to determine the Alberta champion in this year's Briar in Regina. Well, I didn't mean to give you a tough time. But nobody is feeling sorry for you today. I don't know if you were there last night for the draw at the uh, dance and banquet at the Elks Club, but somebody from the Avenir Curling Club, a Doug Squire from Bonacord, bought a ticket at your club and uh, won a week's accommodation and pass for the Briar in Regina. And the manager of the club he got the ticket at also goes to the Briar in Regina. You happen to be the manager. So you get no tears from me today. No well, what. I was surprised when I came in this morning and I found that out. Uh, actually, we didn't have to buy a ticket. Uh, if, they, if they drank a Labatt's product, uh, they signed their name and put it in. Of course, I stamped every ticket. Yeah, yeah and if they didn't sign their name, you went and stamped it, didn't you? That's right. Well, congratulations. Well, that's, uh, you get to the Briar whether you curl or not. How do you work that? Well, I told Kevin downstairs, I said, I'm, sh I'm, I'm going for sure. I'm not sure you got to play better here to get there. <laughs> well, everybody opened up very well. Both teams, Mike Baverick's team and Kevin Martin's team in the first end. Kevin, of course, by finishing first in the round robin, had the automatic last rock in the first end. That's about the only edge he got for finishing first and a day off, of course. But there seems to be a little <laughs> conjecture whether a day off is good or not. Well, uh, this is the oldest uh, member of the team, uh, Dan Lemurix, and uh, 32 years old. Born in uh, Ontario, Hearst, Ontario. You know, it's uh, all four of these players for Vavrik have, have curled 14 years. And their experience is uh, a little less than Kevin's team. Kevin's team altogether have, have 67%, uh, 67 years of uh, experience against 56, so it's uh, not too many years difference. Uh, Bartlett has 19 years, so that's a little more experience in their lead. He's the old guy on Kevin's team, 31 years of age, throwing his out turn, hits and stays, rolls a little bit off that center line. Of course, Kevin's team uh, will be leaving in about a week's time and heading for Albert Bird, Albertville, France, where they will represent our country in the Olympics. It's a demonstration sport curling is uh, this year. I was mentioning last night at the uh, banquet, Hecker, there, we're all hoping that somehow, some way, the World Curling Federation and the Olympic people recognize curling as a legitimate Olympic sport, although it is a little frightening to realize somebody that looks like you could walk away with a gold medal in the future. Well, curling would uh, get quite a boost if it went into the Olympics, and uh, I got a feeling it has a good chance because, you know, there's uh, only so many things you can do in the winter sports and uh, every country, there's 25 countries that curl, there's uh, uh, over three con continents that curl, uh, Japan is having the next Olympics and they like curling, they're coming on strong in the curling, in fact the ladies are going to be represented in Japan uh, this year at Albertville. 
Here's Don Bartlett with his last rock on this second end. He's going to hit and roll back into the rings, just what Kevin Martin wanted. Kevin with the last rock. Nothing fancy, nothing tricky so far on this second end. Lots of uh, controversy over this round-robin format before it started. Uh, mostly from the competitive curlers themselves who didn't quite agree with the change from the triple knockout competition. But this has gone so well for so many reasons that already it has been determined uh, that the round-robin format will be used again to determine the Alberta champions next year when the competition is held in Calgary. Well, Ralph uh, Brust, uh, his hobbies are golf, which is, uh, I'd say, 95% of the men's uh, hobby uh, in the summertime. No normal. Well, Ralph was a good collegiate curler and uh, made it into the finals in collegiate mixed curling back in 1985. And Kevin was skipping a men's team into their final at the same level. And uh, he asked Ralph to curl lead for him the next year in the consoles playdowns. And they did, they did very well, along with Rick Sweeney and also Dan Petrick was on that team. Well, Dan hasn't played for anybody else. In 1985, he played for... Uh, Kevin Martin, they won the Canadian Junior Championships, and uh, and he's been with them ever since. And boy, he's happy playing there, and a good second, 93% uh, average in the seven games they played, and you know that's not missing hardly anything, if anything. Well, Dan, as he was introduced by Jerry Wilson prior to the game, is a professional curler. He took the whole year off to do nothing but curl, and when he's not curling, he sleeps. And he sleeps for nothing at his brother, Steve's. <laughs> he was sleeping at the banquet last night. Couldn't believe it. Here's the intern by Ralph Brust. He hits and rolls toward the middle of the house, and a good shot by Ralph Brust. Well, I tell you, these teams have met so many times before. Last year's final in uh, Lethbridge for the Labatt Tankard, Martin beat Baverick 4-3 to in the A event final. Then he lost 7-2 to in the B final to Baverick. And then in the playoff, Martin won 4-2. to and in the 1985 Provincial Junior Men's Final, they met early in their careers. And uh, Kevin, of course, beat Vavrik at that time. And they have met this year, Vavrik beating Martin in the quarterfinals, as you mentioned, and that's Smithers Field. And, of course, Kevin beat Vavrik 4-1 to in the round robin earlier this week. So they know each other pretty good. No surprises. When you're talking about Dan Petrick curling so well, Kevin was telling me the one game that he was going 103%, and that's hard to believe. He made a, a, a bonus shot there, but the, his last rock of the game picked up a horse hair so, and lost, lost the shot and spoiled his perfect game. 103%? If he'd have been going 110 like he's supposed to, then it wouldn't have mattered if he missed one. Well, keeping track of percentages... Again this afternoon, so we could make the telecast more interesting on Shaw Cable, Cable 10. There's Jerry Wilson's dad, Bob, and Ken the Greek Hunka from the Shamrock Curling Club in Edmonton. And he's mad because I won that uh, ticket to the Briar and, and, and a bet from him besides. I had a whole loony bet with him, and uh, he hasn't paid off yet. Well, all that really proves to me that the Avonair crowd drink more than the Shamrock crowd, that's all. Well, actually, Ken comes over and drinks some at our club. He curls there in a sportsman every Wednesday. There's no drinking in that league. Kevin Park, using his out turn, will try and uh, hit that rock belonging to Baverick and roll off to the side, slightly away from that center line. He certainly is well out on the broom, and it's staying right there. He'll get a piece of the rock, but I don't think he's going to hang around. Kevin Martin says, okay, but it wasn't really an enthusiastic okay. It was like, well, <laughs> well you always like to nice stay. try. It, uh, you always like to have your, your players stay and force them to hit so they don't get their feel of the draw weight. And, of course, Kurt Ballerson, of course, is going to play a draw. And they, uh, they're not taking any chance either, uh, Vavrick. He could be putting them out front just over the hog line and uh, hope that Kevin might make a mistake and leave it there. But he's playing it into the rings. He figures it's too early to do any gambling or any serious gambling anyway. Well, you know, I'm thinking back to the time they met earlier this week, character, when the game that Martin won 4-1. to They blanked the first two ends in that game, and then Kevin did come up with a deuce on the third end, stole one on the fourth end, and that was just about all she wrote in that game. Well, I think, uh, you know, I think the first team to get two in this game or get two ahead is going to be the same. It's been proven. The only only one game came back when they were two down, and that was the game that uh, 
Kevin played uh, the local team here, and uh, he was lucky to get three that uh, in coming home. Well, that type of game in the middle of the week, a low-scoring game, uh, really nothing to write home about, not too exciting. But when you get down to a sudden death and the winner gets to go on to the briar, a one nothing game would be exciting today. Oh, oh, oh. Good. Well, you know, it's probably the, the biggest uh, one single game in, uh, that you can think of except for a final of a briar or a final of the world. You know, there's not, uh, you know, Kevin, this will be the second time. Mike has never been to the briar. And, uh, you know, as uh, Jackie was talking earlier to Kevin, when you've been there before, uh, oh, you want to go back so bad that, uh, you know, the team that hasn't been there isn't sure why they want to get there so bad. Well, you're, one of the ways you're going to get back, at least have a chance, is the, the way they handle each other in between the games. I think in your heyday and some of the champions of that day would spend all night possibly playing Jim Rummy and telling lies. These guys do get a little sleep, most of them anyway, and you start throwing 100 rocks a day uh, just to get the mechanics down, just to have a chance, just to have a chance to get into the situation like they're in here today. Well, you know, one thing about it for both these teams, they throw a lot of rocks, and if they happen to lose, at least they have give everything they've uh, had before before they came to this uh, competition. It's when you don't play and throw lots of rocks and you come and you start not playing as well, you probably wish you would have thrown lots. So they're prepared for this. And uh, you know, one thing about it, uh, that it wouldn't matter which team won, it's gonna be a good representative for Alberta. There isn't any doubt about that. <coughs> Kevin Martin deserves the favorite role. He's the defending champion. He won the Briar. He almost won the world championship. But he's had nothing but tough, battles against this Baverick team over the years, the last three years or so, from Grand Prairie. And Kevin is just going to try and get one over to the side of the house. This looks very much like one of those blank ends. Of course, we said that yesterday in that Morissette game against uh, Baverick, and bingo, all of a sudden, somebody nosed one. It's not quite as easy as it looks. Well, at least if they're in the rings when you nose them, uh it forces the other team pretty well to hit it. It's when you know one that's out in front that causes a little bit of problem. And Kevin's even going to the side of his first one here. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he wants to get into the rings because it would be a little late to set up a corner guard. Right. Right he doesn't right want any corner go. guard here. He's right. got to get this one in because right. if he doesn't, Baverick will dive right in behind him. Okay, yeah. Working this one. Good scrubbing, guys. Good scrubbing by the Kevin Martin team. Still can't get used to not seeing those corn brooms out there. I'm fighting a dying battle, a dead battle, I guess. But I mean, the presentation by Shaw Cable of the action all week, I think, has just been excellent. And uh, certainly the Shaw Cable people can take bows for their visual presentation of all this. But it would be a little bit better if we saw these young men out there using those corn brooms today. It would even be a bigger spectacle than it already is. And it's big, even with those yucky push brooms. Well, that's it. I'll not say any more about it today, okay? Uh, you're, 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 what I want to do next year, Wes, is I'm going to get you to play lead for me, and I'm going to throw light. And then you see what your corn broom does. I, I have played for you in more than one spiel, and it cost me about five years of my life I swept so hard. And Mike Vavrick's going to hit it on the outside. We're going to have another blank end here in the second end of this 1992 Lats Labatt's Tankard Provincial Final from the beautiful Leduc Curling Club between Kevin Martin and Mike Vavrick. And the only edge goes to Kevin Martin because he will retain the hammer on the third end. You know, it's going exactly the way Kevin, uh, Kevin doesn't mind this at all. He has last rock. Yeah, he'd be glad if it went uh, tenth end before and then hopefully make his last one to win. So it's uh, going exactly the way uh, he'd like it. And uh, Baverick's making it easy for him. The last end he rolled out, this end he rolled out, and just give Kevin a chance to get a feel of what the ice does in different spots here. And here's a, a good example of what some curlers can go to school on, Kevin, uh, with the chance to blank the second end, did not just fire through and not look at it. He, he used that rock to uh, maybe find out what that rock did in that particular position. He just had quiet hack weight with that one, followed it all the way down, make sure that uh, he knew exactly in case he had to make a shot right there that he knew what the ice would do. And that was a little bit of a tricky spot in a couple of the games this week. Uh, if you got a little bit out on the out turn, uh, quiet takeout is straightened up there and uh, a little over center would cut and he wanted to make sure he found out exactly what he what it's going to do right now well we mentioned last night at the uh, wind-up banquet at the elks club boy they put on quite a spread there last night 
Isn't it funny? I guess my waistline shows it. I never met a smorgasbord I didn't like. They mark that down. Just absolutely awesome. The only person that ate more than me was Dan Lyon, the third for Frank Morissette's team. He had mashed potatoes. I thought he was eating a ski slope. I couldn't believe how much he ate. He told me after he was born under the sign, uh, all you can eat for $5 is what he went. But anyway, it was a great meal last night. Then they made the draw for everybody that bought a ticket to uh, the banquet. Uh, they made the draw for a trip for two to Regina for the Briar and all accommodations, uh, of course, airfare and the rooms and everything paid for. And Rick White of Calgary was the lucky winner there. Right. And uh, Rick, we threw in a haircut for Rick because his hair came down to about his waistline. He was a pretty happy camper and he roomed all week with Brian uh, because there's the fine curler from Calgary had kind of a rough week. So it turned out, he said, I really didn't enjoy the week because this guy was grumpy and I'm not taking him to the Briar in Regina. Rick White was the lucky winner. Well, he probably is going to have the room next to me and he's probably noisy and party all the time. Yeah, well, nobody will hear him the way you snore. Take my word for it. <laughs> There's Dan Petrick with his intern and he's not going to stay around. He got on the outside of the rock and he'll roll out with this one. Kevin Martin just There's asked for the rock out in front time, again. I think he wants a little further over this time. Let's see what he could. When they went down on the first end, Kevin got a rock over there, and Mike Vavrick ended up ignoring it and went to the other side of the house. So let's see if Don Bartley can put it a little further, closer to the boards this time than his first one. Well, there must be a reason why Kevin, on the first end, he had a chance to do this, and he put it on the intern side again. Maybe he thinks that if he ever gets one buried there, that uh, Mike Ravick probably favors his out turn, and uh, he'd have to fill the in on it. Well, there it is. That's exactly where Kevin Martin wanted it. Mike Ravick's going over, trying to figure out in his own mind whether or not he, he wants to take that off. And yes, he is going to take it off and try and roll it back onto the center line. Of course, that's uh, the defense you can have against a corner guard. If you can't roll off completely, roll to the center and cover that forefoot, and that's exactly what Mike asked for. There's Ralph Rust with his intern. He certainly got the inside of the rock, but I think he's going to go all the way across and out of play. Now, why didn't you say Brust all week instead of saying something else? <laughs> I thought I did. I was in the men's washroom at the Elks Club last night at the banquet, and I was attacked by Ken Hunka and Ralph Brust about how we pronounce Ralph Brust's name, so. <coughs> and once again, Kevin Martin will ask for a rock out in front of the house. Wants to put it right back where the other one was, and this is Dan Petrick. Going to check with Jackie in just a moment as he's got the president of, she's got the president of the NACA my old skip Darwin Davidock. I missed Darwin last night. Uh, his, his brother, Bo, wasn't at the banquet. He's usually worth more than one or two jabs. And he's the nice, nice Davidock. He's the nice Davidock, that's right, too. So while they're trying to get something going on this third end of this Alberta Labatt's Tankard Briar final, let's go down and hear what Jackie Ray and Darwin Davidock have to say. Thanks very, very much, Wes. Uh, as you were saying, Darwin Davidock, the championship chairman, and uh, here we are entering the final ends of the final game of the Labatt Tankard, and you, you must be thrilled with what's gone on this week. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's no question that it's been an exciting week, and uh, the curling here has been just outstanding. You look at uh, five teams who were possibly still in the contention on the final night when they went into all the tiebreakers and everything, and I think uh, that makes it real interesting for, for your format. Well, the, the excitement and the buzz that was here Friday night when no one really knew what was, what was going to happen and people wanting to know when the, the next tiebreaker was on and people phoning in from Edmonton and surrounding area wondering whether it was on television. The excitement was, was electrifying. It was, uh, it was just great. Uh, some people have been discussing the, the pros and cons, of course, of the format all week, but uh, the one good uh, thing I heard uh, some people talking about that would uh, be nice if, if it could go to a 10-team where you maybe have a last bid bond spiel like they do in Manitoba for one rep and then one other rep uh, being your defending Alberta champion from the year previous, having an automatic berth into the provincials. What are your thoughts on that? 
Uh, that's interesting. I've never thought about that. Uh, I don't think anybody has really broached uh, the Alberta Curling Federation about that particular concept, but that's interesting. It was mine. I, you know, if you do it, I'll, I'll say I did it. No. That's <laughs> Darwin Davitt. Congratulations on a great week. Thank you very much, Jackie, and thank you for all the help you've given us. Uh, my pleasure. Back to you, Wes. All right, Darwin and Jackie, I wouldn't change a thing off the uh, success of this year's format. I'll tell you that right now. And Darwin and his brother Bo are a couple of legends in Northern Alberta curling circles for about 35 years now, coming out of Innisfree. They weren't really born, the Davidock brothers. I believe their mother knit them out of about 36 feet of Marsatian sausage, I think, is the way the story goes. And uh, Darwin and Bo, top competitive curlers, Bo knew he was getting old when he was one of the great corn broom users up until a couple of years ago, and he went to the push broom, and all of a sudden his career was over. Kevin Park kind of put another corner guard up there. As you can see, there's not really too much to describe so far in the way of curling strategy or outstanding shots because it's so simple right now. We'll be back to pick up some of the action or lack of action on the third end of this Alberta final between Mike Vavrick and Kevin Martin after this word from our sponsor. The Northern Alberta Curling Association is proud to host the 1992 Alberta Labatt Tankard. The NACA provides the following services to the curlers in Northern Alberta. Management of playdowns, promotion of curling, education in the sport, administration functions, NACA, a curling tradition since 1918. Pepsi is a proud sponsor of the Alberta Tankard, and 1992 marks the 35th year of Pepsi support for curling in Canada, including the Pepsi Juniors from provincial and territorial playdowns right up to the national championships being held this year in Vernon, B.C. This is the longest-running corporate sponsorship in any amateur sport in Canada. In 1992, Pepsi is also a proud sponsor of Team Canada, who will compete in Albertville, France. Pepsi, gotta have it. You got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. Uh, you practice just like I told you last night. We'll be stars next week. Well, he got like Mike Vavrick a little bit. He, he switched around just like he did on the first end. He left the corner guard out in front this time and drew to the other side of the house. Well, that's exactly what he did in the game in the round robin, and uh, it ended up that uh, the last time they played each other, Kevin Park stayed. Uh, the third man rolled out, and then uh, uh, Kevin drew, yeah, came in right behind clean, the guard and clean, got a two-ender. Right. Well, they got to make sure they make all their shots if they right. got a corner guard there. They're just going to hit and stay right there. Of course, Darwin never does tell the story about... Uh, ourselves getting an eight ender against them the only eight ender that was in the history of the Edmund playdowns and this is back in 1969 <laughs> and we got an eight ender against Darwin he never brings that up <laughs> well he's about the same age as you and I and memory loss is really not a fault I'll tell you that geez I'm glad you're picking on somebody else <laughs> well I tell you what I never never forget a name and it's a pleasure to be working with you, Matt. <laughs> it's Mac, Mac Vavrick in the hack right now. With the intern, pretty basic. He'd like to hit and possibly roll all the way across the house if he could behind that red rock. He wants to, he's trying to force Kevin right now to take one with that last rock. But he's going to hit and stay right there. And Kevin now would like to hit and roll over there and maybe pick up a deuce on this third end. Well, Kevin's got to make sure he hits and stays on this one because if he doesn't, then Mike has a chance to come and bury behind that uh, corner guy that Kevin put out there and uh, force Kevin to draw for one. Well, it is kind of a touchy shot, uh, Hector, because uh, Kevin wants to hit and get a roll on the rock, and he doesn't want to roll too far and roll out of the rings for the reason that you just mentioned, giving Fabric a chance to dive one in there and force Kevin to take one. So he wants to make sure he gets the rock, and if he's going to be on the safe side, He'll probably rather hit too much of the rock than less of the rock. And they're not sweeping it. Well, in fact, he's hollering, get off of it. He doesn't want to roll up in this one. He's staying on the outside of it. Yeah, well, it's drifting back, if anything. It runs oh so straight here, and if you pick up your weight at all, it will do just that. Well, Kevin got a little bit fortunate there because that hung on to the rings, and now, of course, Vavrick can't go behind the other red one. He's just got to be content with hitting this rock, and we're well on our way, unless Michael can make one heck of a hit and roll right across the house to yet another blank end. 
Well, the first two ends on, on this final shot of uh, Maverick, he rolled out both times and gave Kevin a chance for a free draw, a free throw through the house. So he'd like to stay in, and maybe uh, Kevin might hit and stay in and uh, give him last rock on the, the next end. There's Michael. He got off to a tough start. He lost two of his first three games in the round robin. And then he only lost one of his remaining seven. He picked up steam as he went along. He had trouble with his weight first couple of days. And boy, he found that four foot, put it right in his hip pocket, and it's there every time he needs it. He wants to hit the inside of this rock now and roll it right across the house. He's got the inside. I don't know if he's going to roll far enough. And he rolls into the rings. And Kevin Martin will go down and attempt to blank yet another end. Well, you know, this is the 11th game for uh, Mike Vavrick and his team, and uh, and only the eighth game for Kevin Martin. So there is three games uh, more, but, uh, you know, they're a young team. They uh, only had two games yesterday. They had they did have three the day before with the playoff, and uh, but they uh, don't look like they hurt them one bit. See Kevin with that in turn, his first one. He had the big weight on it, and it didn't move quite as much as he, he thought it might. He got away with it. He'd like to duplicate that shot and hit a little more on the outside. He definitely wants to roll out on this one. Does not want this one to stick. This is going to be close. He's got the outside of the rock with the big weight. He should be all right. Out he goes. Out of play. Good shot by Kevin Mark. That's precision curling right there. It looks pretty basic. looks pretty easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. Well, he did have one very low-scoring game when he played uh, Brian Costain. There was 1-1 coming home, and, uh, you know, Kevin is used to these type of games, and uh, he, he doesn't care. He has last rock, and, uh, you know, as long as his front end can keep it clean, uh, he'd be happy to go to the 10th end, nothing-nothing, uh, and uh, try to make his last one to win the game. Well, you had your powerful Deb Shermack rink out uh, playing, practicing for the provincial playdowns this morning at the Avenir. Every one of them, Diana, Diana Alexander, Sandy Simmerosen, uh, Jackie Ray Greeny, even our uh, Jackie Ray was out there, and Deb Shermack, and played against the three of the husbands, and my son filled in uh, to play for me because it wouldn't be fair with me playing against them. No. And, uh, yes, but I understand in an exhibition game, under the same circumstances with you skipping and not your son, you lost quite convincingly. Well, I was just before the, the city played on, and I wanted to give him confidence, eh? Uh, mm -hmm. So I lost intentionally. Uh huh. Well, Jackie, of course, is going back into some of her old stamping grounds where she made a name for herself judging male stripping contests. Wasn't that the way it went? <laughs> no, they there? kept their clothes on. Oh, they oh, all <laughs> I can't get a break these days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, they leave. They they start their first game down there in the provincial uh, championships on Thursday, and uh, it's going to be a tough uh, field down there. But uh, the girls are preparing themselves. They're playing every day, practicing every day, and uh, yep. they're going to be ready. Yeah. Well, keep your head up when the Faye White Rink from Fort Saskatchewan meets them. I'll guarantee you that. Well, percentages. Uh, there's a uh, 300 uh, percent people playing here. Uh, Daniel Emu is at 83, Rolf Brust at 8, 92, Kurt Bullerson at a hot 100%, Michael Raverick at 75% for an 88% team average, and Don Bartlett's at 100%. He had one this week already. Dan Petrick at 92, he's going right at his average. Kevin Park at 83, and Kevin Martin at 100%. So it's a well curled game, and it's uh, going to take a break uh, for somebody to win this game. That's exactly what uh, Mike Vavrick said at the beginning in our interview. He said, obviously, it's uh, whoever misses first is <laughs> it's not going to come out on top. And I think the way this game's going, he's exactly right. Well, we don't want to take anything away from the high percentages and the excellent curling that's going on here at the Leduc Club. And it gets uh, to this level. It gets a little boring with these blank ends. We've had three in a row, make no mistake about that. But the ice is, is so good. We haven't seen a real difficult shot here so far. So to get those high percentages, uh, the curlers... Uh, certainly have not had to make anything extra difficult. They have just made the basic shots, and they've made them very, very well. And, you know, this isn't the only uh, curling going on. St. Albert has the junior men's. Beaumont has the junior girls. So go on out there and uh, support the juniors and, uh, and uh, watch them good curling. Well, we'll try and maybe bring you an update of what's happening in the junior curling in our neck of the woods in the northern playdowns before this telecast is out. I know for sure that at St. Albert yesterday, Jamie King of St. Albert defeated Curtis Peterson of the Avenir, your club, 8-4, to four, to win the A berth. And sharing the win were Chris Kewen, along with James 
Simarosum and Scott Pfeiffer. And advancing to the fours of the B were Peterson, Colin Davidson of Shamrock, Chris Hassel of Chauvin, and Blake McDonald of Grand Center. And the A final of the Northern Alberta Junior Ladies Playdowns at Beaumont was won by Kerry Dean of Beaumont, who won 10 to 4 over Rhonda Sinclair of Fort McMurray. And Sinclair, Dean Shields of the Shamrock, Nicole Mix of the Shamrock, and Angela Dunkel of Castor reached the fours of the B event. So playdowns on every level right across the country underway right now and it's pretty exciting time of the year for curlers we've heard from saskatchewan our old friend bob falkenberg of uh labats is down there covering that representing uh, labats and the playdowns the northern playdowns in tisdale a very familiar name one of the good young curlers in saskatchewan these days from saskatoon uh, mark dacey uh, has reached the a section final has won the a section final there and they're playing in tisdale and in estevan brad hebert uh, won the a section there of the southern playdowns and the winners will really get excited because they get to go to the provincial final in outlook which is where i always wanted to go well, I wished you would. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Ever been to Outlook? I went through it. I never stopped there, but it's a uh, yeah, well, small little community. But uh, every community in Saskatchewan has got a curling club and a uh, very active curling club. Well, the trouble with Outlook is you can drive in, but you have to back out. That's how small that is. <laughs> Here's the out turn by the hitman from Smoky Lake, Dan Petrick. Kevin Martin retaining, holding on to that last track. It'll be something if they continue on like this for another hour and a half. It could be nothing, nothing coming home, and Kevin's got the last rock. I don't think that's ever happened, but if there were, ever was a situation with the ice conditions and the caliber of curling, this would be it this afternoon. Speaking of low-scoring games, I think Jerry has the results of the uh, ladies' uh, championship in BC you heard from earlier today, Jerry. That's right, a very popular lady, Penny Ryan, lost the BC final to a lady by the name of Walker. Haven't heard of her before, but the score was two to one. That's the second time in a row Penny has lost the BC final, last year to Julie Sutton, where Julie picked up two on the last end to beat her. So. Well, I tell you, it gets depressing when you get that far, that close, and you don't advance. But Penny, of course, is... How do you know, Wes? <laughs> because you and Hector and Jerry have told me. That's why. <laughs> and I tell you, it is depressing for people to get that far. I have to go. You're right, Jackie Ray, because people have told me I've never been there. But, of course, Penny, very familiar, very competitive, and Pat Ryan's uh, lovely wife, and uh, almost representing BC as a skip in the final. And the other word that we heard yesterday, that uh, Penny's husband, Pat, playing for Rick Folk, uh, have made the final eight in the BC Playdowns, which are currently underway. And that's quite a team, Rick Folk, Pat Ryan together. Bert Gretzinger, I believe, is their second. I forget who their lead is, but... We got a little bit going here. There is a rock in play. It's about three, four inches from the 12 foot, and uh, Kevin's trying to use everything here. He's going to try to freeze to it or, or come down and get behind it. He's going to try and freeze to it right now, and he's very close to a good shot. Oh, beauty. Might not be in right now, but he'll have a chance at some time to maybe get that one in. And it makes Mike Maverick think that he doesn't think too long. He thinks good, but not too long. He seems to be able to make up his mind quickly. He beat us to the punch yesterday, throwing that last rock. Uh, to beat Frank Morissette when we thought he might be thinking of a quiet takeout he just went down never even bothered told Morissette he didn't care what he did with his last shot he was gonna he was gonna draw the button well it's not easy to get that one out of there they'd have to hit the wide side of it and uh, his third Kurt Balderson uh, talked him into it yeah Kurt changed his mind he, seems, he thinks that's gonna be a dangerous situation which it could be eventually through this end if they'd have left it maybe they could, Kevin could have hit it uh, half on and rolled both in well we'll see with the out turn he's got to hit it on the outside he is way on the out. That's drifting, Hector. That rock is drifting, and he got enough of it to clean it out of there and move it out of play. It's interesting to watch Kevin and uh, Mike Baverick uh, look as that rock bounced off the fort. When they, when they played uh, in that uh, round robin game a little while ago, oh. uh, and, uh, they uh, had a little discussion out there that the official had to come out and uh, decide where the rock should go back, but there was no discussion there. Well, it was uh, it was done exactly right. The uh, most of the time, the two skips will decide where if a rock is moved accidentally, and uh, 
it's back where pretty well where it was before and Kevin's going to try and come around that one if they can and uh, hopefully get it a little bit buried. He hasn't got much room back there. All right, let's see what Kevin Park does with it. They're trying to get something going here. Kevin trying to make a move. It's a three blank end ball game right here. Playing the fourth end. And the defending champion and Briar champion, Kevin Larson has the last rock. I don't know if this is going to come far. It's not breaking anyway, Hector. Even with that intern and that quiet weight, it really wasn't moving too much. But he was a little shy in the weight and a pretty uh, basic shot here for uh, Mike Vavrick. We'll be back to describe the Skiffs Rocks in the fourth end of this Alberta Levat Tankard final after this word from our sponsor. Sold is the sign of a winning strategy in today's real estate market. Be a winner. Go for the gold. Call Lauren Hostin at 986-2100 for service on all your real estate needs. Labatt Breweries of Canada have been the proud sponsors of the Labatt Tankard since 1980. Since that time, we have witnessed some of the finest curling in the world, from Victoria, B.C. to St. John's, Newfoundland. Please accept our invitation to join us at the Leduc Curling Club from January 29th to February 3rd, 1992, to be a part of the Labatt Alberta Provincial Tankard Championships. Jerry Wilson would like to welcome all participants and viewers to the Alberta Labatt Tankard and would like to wish the winner lots of success in the upcoming Briar. Jerry has been a member of the Edmonton Real Estate Board since 1974 and is also a member of the MLS Million Dollar Club. For effective, customer-friendly real estate results, call Jerry Wilson at 464-4060. Oh, a good shot by uh, Mike Vavrick with his first rock. He just hit and stayed. I guess Kevin had a couple of alternatives here. He could have elected to draw behind that rock, Hector, if he really wanted to in the worst way. But it's still early, so it's not really the worst way. He's going to play it safe. You know, Kevin was born in Killam, Alberta, but uh, lives, uh, lives with Lougheed for many years, where his dad still has uh, some land there. And uh, only 25 years in that hole, and that's... Uh, very young for a fellow that's won a Canadian Juniors, and I think the only skip that won a Canadian Junior skipping and won a Briar skipping. Uh, there's been he a lot is. of them, and that's a quite a feat at a young age of 25 and handled himself very well. Yes, he does. He's got that personality. He seems to be able to handle the pressure, and he handles the media very well, and and the rest of the curling fans. Plays a little gin rummy. Obviously, you taught him that. A little bit of crib. I suppose you got all the money that you ever played him for. See, when he had no money, I played him for a little bit. Now he's got lots, and I can't get him to play. <laughs> well, not only can curl, he's smart, too. I so Mike Fabric will go down there and, and try and hit this one and, and at least make Kevin Martin make a shot to blank the end, and we could have our fourth straight blank end right here before our very eyes. The Duke Curling Club, good crowd on hand here, good support by the... Leduc curling populace in this beautiful facility that they're very proud of. It's managed by Al Miller and President Shirley Douglas. Done a great job. Great hospitality this week, and the curlers have responded with some outstanding curling. Here's Mike Fabric. Going to hit this thing on the outside, roll over towards his own rock, and he stops right there. So it's pretty well the same shot that Kevin Martin had before as he attempts to bank the end. Both skips have come up firing here today. Well, you know, Kevin has to watch a little bit here if he hits it uh, half on or something. He could come over and nick that other yellow one in, but I don't think it'll get in. And Martin just did say to Park, he says, we got to hit this thick. So he just wants to hit about three quarters of it so that the one that's uh, near the boards doesn't come into play at all. All right, Kevin, won't take too much time with this. It was interesting to see Kurt Balderson change uh, the shot that Mike Maverick wanted to play earlier in this game. Did you ever allow your third? I think of Ron Anton, one of the great shot makers that we've ever seen in this neck of the woods. I never heard him speak. Did he ever try and change your mind? Wouldn't have done any good that way, would it? He, uh, he just looked, when he looked a certain way, I, uh, I just, uh, I knew that was something he didn't like. So, but he never, we never talked uh, very much on the ice at all and uh, never talked off the ice either. <laughs> 
I always thought that Ann was deaf because you were always yelling and yelling and never seemed to bother him. He just went about his business, made all his shots. Oh, and what a third he was. He was, uh, I haven't seen a third any better yet. Uh, you know, he was the youngest uh, person to ever been a briar at 19 years old, and, uh, well, he could make them all, and he made it a lot easier for me. Well, you had some great thirds, too. Now, Ant and I will agree with you. I've never seen a better shot maker in my lifetime, which uh, goes back as long as yours, uh, than Ron Anton. But you had some good ones along the way. You went to the Briar once. Uh, Bill Mitchell was your third. You had Don Anderson a third one time, was another great shot maker. You had some good ones. Well, Bill was uh, a great third. In fact, the year we played two years together, and we should have went to another Briar, and I missed uh, an open shot at the... Uh, the year the watch horn went, but uh, Bill was a great third, and I was lucky to have lots of good curlers for to play for me, and it made it uh, so much easier for me to curl well. well. Curlers love curling, and Bill Mitchell's been curling most of his lifetime, and has won more than most curlers. He was here the other day watching the curling. You could stay home and watch this on TV if you wanted, but curlers seem to like to be there. There's an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere up here where we are, and they're enjoying each other's company, enjoying the hospitality. You can see no people way. down on the ice with their coats on. You wonder, what are they doing, sure. watching a 4 nut. Uh, four blank end zero zero curling game, but they love it. Curlers love curling. Well, they they know that something might happen, and uh, you know they don't know when it's going to happen. But you know the patients start uh, weekend after five or six or seven ends of curling, and there might be a mistake made on a call or something, trying to get anxious or somebody to call, especially for Mike Vavrick who hasn't got last rock. He wants to have something happen here and get Kevin to take one or hopefully steal one and. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes as the game progresses, you get a little more impatient and uh, maybe make a little bit of a mistake that'll help the other team. And with Maverick throwing up that uh, center guard, you know, instead of throwing it into the top rings, Kevin did look at it for a few seconds. He didn't uh, go right to s for the peel there. He did think about it for a second about coming around, then he decided, not. let's hit and roll for a corner guard, but he did hit and roll out. So uh, I think they're both thinking about it's time to make a move. It's something like that you have said that for start of the game, Vavrik was throwing him in the rings, and now he's putting him short. He might be feeling the, the old time ticking down. Well, it's like know, waiting for the other shoe to drop, isn't it? I don't think uh, Kevin might on something like this. He's a little off center, but, uh, you know, he has last rock. Uh, he'd uh, really hate to take a gamble, and it would backfire and uh, cost him the game, and uh, he doesn't have to gamble. He has control with last rock, and... Uh, Maybe a couple of shots down the way, there'll be a be one that's better to come around. So he's showing patience, and that usually pays off. Well, I'll tell you what. He gets 0 0.5 for his landing, that Don Bartlett, but he gets all he does is make them all. Well, he can bring colorful he has, finish. He has back trouble, but no wonder the way he falls down. <laughs> he's going to have stomach trouble, too, if he keeps flopping like that. Well, we mentioned Ron Anton and how curlers just love curling and come out no matter how many games they've played, how many years uh, that they have played. And Ron Anton, as we were talking to him, is here uh, watching this game today. Of course, Ron has taken it a little further along the curling line. He is uh, one of the Team Canada coaches for the Olympics and uh, is a great, not only player of the game, uh, but a teacher of the game. And no better teacher you could find. He... Uh, he uh Went with Johnny Trout, who, uh, who's not with us anymore. Went to the junior with him, uh, and they won the Canadian. He has coached a lot in his life, and boy, whoever gets him to help him out, he, uh, he knows every bit about curling, and uh, they'd be wise to listen to him. But the changes of deliveries over the years to the old days uh, when oh, he used to have to lift the rock and really throw it. Now the ice conditions are so good, a lot of the young curlers today don't even bother lifting up their rocks. But a delivery like Ron Anton, which was one of the classics of all time, has stood up through the test of time. It really doesn't matter how the ice conditions are. Uh, Ron still throws the rock the way he threw it when he used to curl on natural ice even back when he started. And one thing about Ron Anton, he could throw on any type of ice, keen ice, heavy ice, uh, you know, some real good thirds, for instance, uh, Ernie Richardson third uh, was a deadly player, but if he got on heavy ice, he was, had a little bit of trouble, but Ron could throw on any kind of ice, and uh, I was just a lucky man to have somebody like that, uh, that would play third for me for so many years. And gentlemen, uh, the game is on, as you can see. Uh, Dan Patrick made a great hit and roll off that for a corner guard, and, uh, and uh, Vavrick's throwing one up. Oh, here's Ralph Rust. And he's going to try and get something going here. There's been four blank ends in this final of the Labatt Tankard. The right to represent Alberta in this year's Labatt Briar in Regina in March. Between Mike Fabric and Kevin Martin. Kevin Martin, 
at the last rock on the first end as a result of his first place finish in the round robin competition where he lost only one game and that was to Don Walchuk of the Otwell Curling Club in Edmonton in the middle of the week. And Kevin's uh, going to take this one off and uh, you know Mike Valerie explained it the right way if you're going to leave a corner guard you either come into the house or put a center guard he wants to try for a steal here and by putting it in the uh, center is the best way to do it and because uh, if he happened to come in the ring to this one they could get a roll behind so uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll just want it out in front and maybe close to the house so that uh, Kevin can't come around it. Now it'll be interesting he's going to try and stick one up there at the very same spot and of course Kevin is quite capable he can play both games of having a look at it maybe ducking in behind it if he really wants to go for it but as you mentioned he has got whatever control there is in this game if he can get control in a nothing nothing game he's got the hammer well you know they they do throw rocks before the game on it but uh, you know kevin and his boys except for kevin uh, i don't think kevin park has thrown a draw yet he threw a corner guard once or twice so uh, if they do decide to come around that center guard if it stays out there and it is staying out a little bit wide oh it's oh, it really grabs something. Oh. it grabs something this there's the gonna... first break of the ball game well it is because it gives kevin uh, martin a chance to come around that corner guard and you know you, it's amazing that there be a, a, a hair hog hair or horse here with uh, two teams that uh, play they must have the best turning brooms there is to, to play with and uh, unfortunately that was a hair for sure that it caught well what do they make those things out of hog hairs or horse hairs or what kind of hair is it well i i think it's uh ho the hog hairs out of hog hair and horse hair out of horse but i always thought that the hog hair was tougher to lose uh hairs because they uh they don't get wax around the bottom of them and they don't break but uh well, that's that's an unfortunate situation because that's about the only thing that can go wrong in such perfect ice as as if a rock picks up something like that and and with whatever hair that is uh, it's pretty tough to detect because those curlers are out there looking for that trying to keep the ice clean at all time but they missed that one and we'll have to wait and see just if this is the break that kevin martin is waiting for if he can take advantage of this break kevin park trying to come around that corner guard now it's got a move to barry it looks like he's got the weight he's well past the guard well past the guard now it's starting to break he's trying to get it in behind now they're sweeping it and he got it partially in behind but it is sticking out they can pick that one out that's not exactly the way they wanted it the communication between the sweepers and uh, martin and park was just great on that you know and bartlett's saying as soon as they hit the hog he said not much weight we got to go and they said we can't go and that's what the thing was they would love to have gone on that one but it just wasn't breaking for them you know, he can buy that guard uh, by a good six seven inches jackie and you're right they had to wait on that one and once it did move it turned out to be a little bit light well, it's as fortunate for Vavrik if he can hit about three quarters of a half a rock here, they can roll into the uh, 12 or 8 foot and uh, take the play away from that corner guard. He wants to get away from that corner guard. No doubt about it. Kurt Balderson with the out turn now. He wants to catch this one and roll even on the other side of the center line. Get it away from that corner guard and just exchange shots the rest of the way in. He's on the outside. It's moving now. And now he's going to hit it pretty well on the nose. Stays right there. Good shot by Kurt Balderson. Definitely a few Grand Prairie fans in the, out here this afternoon. Well, they're getting fired up, Jerry, because they've got the Dominion Mixed Curling Championships in Grand Prairie in the middle of March, and they have got a great curling complex. I don't think I've ever seen a better one than this, but up in Grand Prairie, Hector, they've got an outstanding curling complex out there with the great ice and the great club room and some great curling enthusiasts up there. They'll make that a show for sure. Well, I know last year the, the ladies team, Deb and her team were up there in the provincials and boy, nice ice to play on and a very nice complex and very friendly people. So that's a good place to go to. to There's have. Kevin Park now with his out turn. Kevin would like to hit and stay right there. He's on the outside of the rock. It's got to move now and now it's breaking and he's going to hit it right on the nose. They'll take that. That's the, you know, Kevin's attempted uh, a draw behind cover with his first shot seemed to hang there even with that quiet weight yet both of those outturn takeouts uh, by Kurt Balderson and Kevin Park seemed to move with big weight yes they did and I'm surprised that they didn't try to roll off that one and get into the rings because uh, uh, Mike Vavrik can't take both of them off he's going to try and bury behind this one and force Kevin into one or maybe even stealing one well, it looks right now that we are finally going to get 
something on the scoreboard in this end if they make their shots perfectly the rest of the way and Mike's going to try that out turn hoping it it breaks in and gets behind cover I think Kevin will have a couple of opportunities to play the raise takeout if it's lined up properly or follow him in with draw weight so we'll have to wait and see well this is a very crucial that you're not behind the t-line with this one if he buries behind the t-line Kevin could follow him in if he's can partially bury and be in front of the t-line where you can't freeze to it that would be exactly what Mike would want all right Mike who's had that draw weight ever since his fourth game right in his back pocket he won a, well he won more than one game but uh, he won yesterday's game absolutely brilliant with his last rock oh, yeah. his, it's coming now yesterday morning he made a draw to the forefoot to beat uh, Don Walchuk Dorn, Dorn Johnson the day before against Walchuk yeah. so he's uh, this one's not burying Wes well it's not moving yet that out turns a little strange he's back to the forefoot circle now it's snapping it at, the caught something at the end yeah, it, it just did. caught something in the last couple of feet in the top eight foot and it broke in it just took a big spin when it got into the ring now he can see about a third of it or a half of it from here so Kevin would like to get that and stay in the range to roll over to the other side of the forefoot and uh, he's taking uh, lots of ice on it well that's a tricky shot gang because uh, that rock uh, thrown in that very same spot by Mike Baverick really did not move with that quiet weight until Jackie mentioned right at the last it grabbed something and dove uh, in behind to the point where it's at least half covered and that's what's bothering Kevin right now because if he ups his weight and attempt uh, to take that out he could drift right by so he's going to change his mind and he is going to try the straight yep. take away yeah once he got down and had a look at it he uh he figured boy i don't have i can't see as much as that rock as i thought so that's why he changed it to the raise and a good good idea because you know even if he doesn't get it onto the back one if he can clear that front one off there it would force uh Vavre either to put a guard on it draw to the other side but kevin will have a shot where if he happened to miss on the quiet takeout Boy, he'd have a tough shot with his last one. This way, if he hits it just right, he could even be he, laying one buried. Laying one buried, that's another possibility. If he makes it perfect, let's see what he does. Here he comes with the in turn. He won't be light, lets it go. Get on it right away. Must be close. Not it's moving. Not it's not moving. It's, it's not moving. And he just misses the back one. Looked good for a while, Hector. Got halfway down and just sat there. Well, Mike Raverick looks like he's going to, he took about the same ice as his draw. He's going to try to put a guard on it and force Kevin to, uh, you know, a very touchy draw at this stage where Kevin hasn't played one, uh, too many draws in this game. Well, they're talking over the ice right now, and uh, as we mentioned, Kurt Balderson and Mike Raverick elected not to put the microphones on. They'd rather not. They're on a roll. We're playing very, very well, and any little thing... They might distract them, and of course, most people are a little bit superstitious that I've run into, and curlers especially. Once they get to the Dominion level, is it not that they, if they're asked, if they're on TV, if it's a game, that they, they are committed to wear the microphones? Yes, they have to sign a form for that. I think what they were talking over is, do we put a guard on it? Do we draw to the other side and force Kevin to take one or maybe get lucky and steal one? Actually, you know, Hector, the big discussion was uh, not to split the rings, but they were discussing the ice because, as you saw there, it was just the final uh, cup, well, foot when it caught something that it moved. So they were deciding if they should uh, put the ice on the edge of the button. They say, well, you know, it could hang on that support part of the ice. But then uh, Mike said, well, geez, you know, we give a little less. That could take off and we're not going to guard anything. So it was a more ice discussion uh, more than anything. All right, let's see what Mike Maverick does with this draw. If we, as we mentioned, the, looks like we're finally going to get a little scoreboard action in this game, no matter what happens in these last two rocks. Here comes Mike Maverick with his quiet out turn. He just threw one right there. He certainly had the weight, so there's no problem with the weight. It's just a matter of what this rock is going to do. Now, it's coming across the center line, and they are just brushing it lightly, just keeping it clean, that's all. So he must be very close to perfect. Oh, it looks like a dandy. Kevin's going to either have to play it on. He isn't hesitating at all. He's going to play a draw here. Now well, we are halfway through, Wes. This is the fifth end when Kevin throws his last one here. And, uh, boy, one point's going to look big, uh, whoever gets it. Well, Kevin Martin's going to go for it. There's only one other shot here if Kevin really wanted to go for it, and that's hitting that front one in that same spot he threw his first rock and possibly doubling them both out and blanking the end again but he's elected to go for the straight draw 
And he's made and making lots of draws this week, too. And although he hasn't played too many draws this game, I'm sure he's going to be somewhere close. Well, let's see. Kevin Martin, his first real pressure shot in this game, gets it away with the out turn. He's a little further out with that out turn than anybody has been so far in this game. And uh, they're not really leaning on it yet, so they figure he's close. Now they get on it. Now they got on. Now they got to go. Kevin says, "You got to move." Oh boy! Kevin's got his fist in the air, but they better have another look at that one. That's close. That is close. <laughs> Very close. Great brushing there. And it was great, one red. A uh, great shot from our overhead Excellent camera. Excellent brushing. Yeah. Boy, nice way to finish the, and have the fifth end break, getting your one point, and boy, that would have, that is a big point. Well, there's a case of, uh, I think the team are really relieved they got that one in there because they really didn't do anything with that rock till about the hog line, and then all of a sudden it moved a little bit, and then panic set in, and he just got there. So there you go, after five ends of play, the halfway mark of the 1992 Labatt Tankard, Mike Baverick and Kevin Martin battling for the right to represent this province in this year's Briar, won last year by the same Kevin Martin, and Kevin had to use his last rock on the fifth end to pick up one, had to draw the four-foot circle, and at the halfway point, he leads Mike Baverick by a score of one to nothing. So they have a little break here in the fifth end as they do in all the play-down games to clean the, clean the ice, and some of the crowd out at ice level will take the opportunity to come in and have a, a Pepsi or whatever and uh, we'll get back after the second half in just a couple of moments but and right now Jackie Ray Greening has a member of the Grand Prairie rink and let's go down to ice level and hear what they have to say Thanks very much, Wes. I have Kurt Balderston, the great third for Mike Vabrick, and uh, you had to make a move in that fifth end. Uh, the first four ends probably went as you expected, but uh, you guys made a great move in five. Yeah, we thought we'd try throwing him in for a few ends, and, you know, hopefully he'd hit and stick, but he doesn't do that very often, so we thought in the fifth end we had to throw stuff up and uh, try to force him to one. A very tricky spot. It either stays straight or comes there. You guys were having quite a discussion on the guard there. Yeah, his, well, Mike's last one, or his first one, picked something up right at the end, so it maybe moved an extra three or four inches, and we were scared to get out too far because it would hang on that line, and we didn't want to leave him the easy blank again. And for the second half of the game now, I guess that you have a deuce in mind. You're going to go for it. Yeah, we got to play offense. I mean, they can, they can run rocks the rest of the game, so uh, we, can't, uh, we can't let them get the hammer back without hopefully getting a deuce. Best of luck in the final half. Thank you very much. Kurt Balderson, the third for Mike Vavrick, and we're going to move right in here with the third for Kevin Martin, uh, Kevin Park. <laughs> when it hit the hog, I was thinking, ah, it looks a little light, and then you guys really pumped it the last 12 feet. To me, it looked light when he let it go, and the boys thought it was heavy, and uh, of course, as it got to the hog line, and it was apparently light, so we had to go. <laughs> That was an interesting end. You had a big break when theirs caught one when they were throwing a center guard up. You had the chance to go around, but yours just didn't want to move. Well, mine didn't, and then, of course, he got his horse air break back by catching at the top of the house and burying it. We were forced to play the raise, and, of course, we just missed it by a quarter inch. It just seemed, he, it looked like Kevin had nice weight on it, but just didn't seem to move. No, it backed off, if anything. So I guess the second half, you've got what you wanted. You're still in control. You're one up. Uh, what's happening in the second half? Well, more of the same. We'll try to keep it simple and force them to one, get the hammer back, and go for the deuce. Well, best of luck in the final half, Kevin. Thank you very much, Jackie. Kevin Park, the third for Kevin Martin. We are having a barn burner here at the Leduc Curling Club. We are coming to you live from the 1992 Men's Provincial Championship. It is the final game of the Labatt Tankard. We will be back with the final five ends in just a few minutes. the funnel cloud, trademark of the most violent storm on Earth. Often lasting only a few minutes, the terrifying winds of a tornado form a coil of destruction. Winds at the outer edge of the funnel hurl aside almost everything in their path. The dangerous nature of this phenomenon is compounded by the rapidity with which it forms. Severe weather often develops so quickly that every second of advance warning could mean the difference between life and death. The Edmonton tornado of July 1987 was among the largest ever experienced in Canada. It left an unforgettable mark.
Yet despite its size and devastating power, the track of the twister was only about a kilometer wide, small enough to slip between standard weather observation sites. Because it occurred in a heavily populated area, the Edmonton tornado was reported by many volunteer weather observers. In less populated areas, where there are fewer weather observers, severe weather often goes unreported until it is too late. In their attempt to identify and track severe thunderstorms, forecasters rely upon weather radar. Weather radars operate in the following fashion. A radio pulse is transmitted from a rotating dish. It reflects off falling raindrops and returns to the radar dish. The return signal is stronger for larger or more numerous drops so strong returns are interpreted as heavy rain. By rotating the radar dish, a map of precipitation areas is generated. The following simulation shows a line of showers crossing central Alberta. The blue and purple areas indicate rainfall rates of two to four centimeters per hour, while the white areas indicate very light rain, less than two tenths of a centimeter per hour. The computer eliminates weaker radar returns so that the forecaster can concentrate on the most severe storms. Rainfall rates and storm structure fail to provide a complete forecast picture. Researchers have found that severe storms, particularly those associated with tornadoes, often occur with thunderstorms which are rotating. These are called mesocyclones. Damaging winds often originate in higher altitudes. If wind patterns could be monitored in fine detail, forecasters would have a better idea of which thunderstorms are likely to produce tornadoes and other severe weather events. The observation of these detailed wind patterns is possible using Doppler weather radar technology. The Doppler weather radar system makes use of the fact that moving raindrops cause a wavelength change in reflected radio waves, the same principle used by police radar to measure the speed of a car. The higher the speed of the raindrops, the larger the shift in wavelength. This change in wavelength is called the Doppler effect. This Doppler radar image shows a cluster of thunderstorms. The portions of the cluster which are rotating are quite small. The reddish warm colors indicate winds moving away from the radar. The bluish cold areas are winds moving towards the radar. This case in fact shows areas of rotation within the thunderstorm complex. A tornado occurred a short time later. Forecasters will be able to monitor many different aspects of a thunderstorm simultaneously in ways they could not do in the past. The various displays include rainfall rates, wind speeds at several altitudes, cloud top heights, and storm intensity. The computer will also monitor the data and provide alerts for rotating thunderstorm cells and possible tornadoes. During the winter, the system will monitor snowfall areas and intensities. Since heavy snow often occurs on the same small scales as thunderstorms, the radar will offer better predictions of local events. The Doppler weather radar system is able to detect precipitation and wind in three dimensions on a very fine scale. This makes it an extremely powerful tool. Meteorologists will monitor the system closely using it together with satellite pictures and volunteer weather reports. Their ability to distinguish severe weather will improve, allowing them to issue more timely warnings of severe weather threats. A tornado watch has been issued by Alberta Weather Centre of Environment Canada for Edmonton region, including the city of Edmonton. While there is still much to learn about storm structure and behavior, Doppler weather radar will lead to an improvement in severe weather detection and prediction. Bonnet winds, 
Although tornadoes and other severe weather develop very rapidly, each technological innovation adds to our margin of safety by protecting Canadians, their property, and their environment. Watching community programming on Shaw Cable 10. This is a replay of the fifth end where the only point that has been scored this game, Jerry. And here it is, Kevin Martin throwing a draw to the forefoot. That's all he had. They really start to work it now. Just some great brushing. Kevin Park jumps in there. And he's there for the all-important point. Kevin Martin won nothing after five ins. Welcome back to Leduc Curling Club, the provincial championship. And we'll go back right upstairs to Wes and Hank. Uh, some great, great pushing by the Kevin Martin rink. Got that last strike of Kevin's in for Shot Rock. And as we pick up the action on the sixth end, we've got an interesting end going here as with Kevin Martin's lead through a rock in the house, Mike Vavrick elected to absolutely ignore it. And he's been throwing up corner guards on the other side of the ice. And Kevin has been picking off these corner guards and they have been good on three of them. Of course, the situation, Martin leading one nothing over Mike Fabric, and they're playing the sixth end. Four straight blank ends by Kevin Martin. He was forced to take one on the fifth end and made a very fine shot with a lot of help from his brushers to pick up that one. Well, he didn't, hadn't thrown many draws either in this game, uh, Wes, and he, uh, boy, they were only shot by about an inch. And, uh, you know, Laverick is playing the only way you can get two points back. You can't depend on an open takeout uh, miss from uh, Kevin and his team. And he's playing a corner guard, hopefully getting a hit on the nose or Kevin leaving it there or missing it and uh, try to get back and, uh, you know, with his last rock and, and get more than one point. Well, it's starting to get a little more difficult as we move on in the second half of this game. I'll tell you what, Hector, it has been a pleasure working with you all week long. And it's certainly a pleasure working with Jackie Ray and Jerry Wilson. You still haven't lost your touch. I just nudge you and says after the fifth end, we have got a five-minute break, Hector, to do with whatever you want to do. We got a five-minute break, and you just turned without hesitating and said it takes me ten minutes to do anything, so I'll just sit here. I think I was right. You were right. <laughs> well, you know, uh, they thought about maybe coming around that rock and. Uh, you know, he's uh, one up, and he uh, doesn't want to start fooling around without last rock, and things can happen when you haven't got last rock, and uh, he's probably playing it pretty smart here. Right. Kevin Martin's going to hit and roll over. He wants it over in front of his own rock. He'd take that all the way over, and a uh, good shot by Kevin Park. Well, it does give a chance for Mike Ravery to get Kurt Ballerson to come around, freeze to that one, and then it'd be uh, half-guarded and tougher to get out, and... I'm sure that they wanted to get that one out of there completely in front. Well, this game could break open right here on this end. We've got the rock out in front, got one in behind it. We're into the draw game now. Mike Vavrick with the last rock on this sixth end. Kurt Balderson wants to draw down right in front of it, freeze to the side of it, and be shot rock. If he does, it'll be tough to get out of there. And these boys have been playing hotter and hotter every game. They've had... Uh, uh, this is their 11th game. They had an extra game on uh, Friday night, an extra game yesterday morning. They had to play against uh, Morissette in the semifinal, and they seem to get playing better every game, and and uh, the draw is what won them two of them out of the three. It's going to be very close, Hector. It's uh, by the guard with lots to spare with good weight. I don't think it's going to pull quite enough unless it grabs right at the last end. He had the weight, but he is certainly out far enough that I think Kevin Park can hit it and take it out. Perfect weight. Uh, just didn't come enough or either that or it was uh, maybe a little too much ice and uh, if Kevin Park can hit this one just right, say half to three quarters of it, he'll roll over in the open and of course uh, it'll change the play a little bit. He just wants quiet weight on this one. 
And that uh, particular draw shot by Kurt Balderson really didn't jerk over there. It moved a couple of feet. And Kevin himself is taking about a foot and a half. And so they're playing this very, very quietly. They just want to hit it on the nose. They want to roll anywhere. He's right out on the broom. They get on it right off the bat. Now they get off it, sweeping very lightly as it comes across the center ice area. They're waiting for it to move now. Now it stops moving. Now it grabs a little bit. Now it is moving. Let's see if it comes far enough. He's going to hit the outside of the rock, knocks it onto his own, rolls to the back of the 8-foot circle, rolls to the back of the 12-foot circle. Dan Petrick has got it, trying to get it back where maybe the Martin Rink are lying too. Good effort by Dan Petrick. I don't know if he got it back far enough or not. They're looking at it right now. There's the overhead look. No, they, they didn't. Uh... Very, very close. Mike Vavrick is being sure. Well, they looked at it two or three times. It looks like the yellow is second shot. And, uh... and Mike just indicated he yelled down to Kurt and the hack. He said, we're second shot. I don't know, Parks just didn't seem to move there. He had excellent weight. His weight was really nice, but it just stopped moving for him. Well, they were on and off it a couple of times, Jackie, so it just worked out. They'd stopped moving the last 10 feet and just stayed there. Of course, he had a little more weight than Kurt Balderson did with his draw shot, and that was the difference. Didn't finish. Here's Kurt now with his second and last shot on the sixth end. He just wants to hit and stay right there. To lie two. This is what Baverick wants. He wants to get a deuce with the last rock on this end. They're working it hard. He certainly has the rock and moves a little bit to the left, and he does lie two. Good shot by Kurt Balderson. Well, they try to, they want to roll over, of course, and he did have a little bit of a roll there. Kevin's still going to look at this one. He's going to make sure that he, they are laying two, and Kevin has a chance to get a no chance for double there. He'd have to hit and roll in front. Oh, of him, maybe like. with the mics on, we oh. can maybe hear something here. Doesn't matter anyway, I guess. Just roll over here. I think it might matter if, uh, if he's laying uh, two or one. Yeah, and, uh, he's got to hit that one anyway. Normal. Well, it doesn't matter. It's turn. It's a lot easier. Where? Right here? Yeah. Doesn't matter too much, I think, is what he was saying, though, Kevin. Uh, uh, Hector, he's still got to hit this rock and, and stay right there. Uh, That's really close. He would like to get a roll over, you know, preferably on the other side, the forefoot somewhere, and uh, set up a double, maybe. Maybe set it up a double, or maybe they get it hit it on back onto this one because uh, 200 would be a big end uh, right about now. And Kevin just went. Yeah, he got in the hack, and he said to, to Dan and Don on the front end. He said, uh, he said, he says they're really, really close. So he can't tell, but of course, I maybe it was more psychological, saying, yeah, we're second. Kevin wants to make sure he hits and stays on this rock. He doesn't want to hit and roll out on this rock, or he may be looking at a possible three under with Fabric. This is hanging out, and rolls over to the twelve foot circle, and he rolled too far. He rolled too far, and Mike Fabric. Well, it, was interesting. He, it was interesting why he changed the outturn initially gave the ice for the intern which when you do that i find you're throwing to the sweepers like you're if you have to hit it on the on the high side you're throwing to your sweepers whereas going at the outturn you're not throwing to your sweepers donnie just said to him as he walked by he said there's a little run there kevin mm -hmm. he uh, said mike. it said it a little too late <laughs> mike does have a chance as you were saying Wes, if he comes around and uh partially buried or maybe three quarters buried behind this one i don't know what kevin's going to have because uh he would uh, not like to give up two but he sure wouldn't want to give up three now they're asking are you sure we're shot well, obviously the way they have gone back and forth looking at those two rocks it is very very close maverick thought he was now kurt balderson is giving it the eagle eye flegel and he's not sure. He looked up to Kevin as if to say, what do you think? Was, uh, of course, Kevin's not going to tell him anything. <laughs> well, we saw Dan Petrick trying to uh, brush that rock belonging to Mike Vavrick uh, back so that his own team's rock was shot. And it doesn't matter which member of the team sweeps behind that T line, but only one member came, and it just so happened uh, Ken, and it just so happened that Dan was the guy in position uh, to uh, sweep that rock. Can you tell anything from the overhead camera shot if uh, if there is? It, it, it doesn't show the one very very much, and uh, it looks uh, from here uh, the yellow might have it, but uh, boy, it's got to be close. Everybody's looked at it right now, except. Uh, 
Patrick and uh, Bartlett are down there. They'll take their turn well, looking probably at won't the end. Move, anyway. Well, they got to make up their mind here sooner or later. We mentioned the Northern Junior Men's Playdowns out in St. Albert. Jamie King of St. Albert winning that A event berth uh, last night. We just had word the B winner last night, Colin Davidson's team from the Shamrock Club. And the C final is on right now. And Chris Haffel of Chauvin is leading Curtis Peterson of your club, Hector, by a score of three to one. And they're playing in the seventh end. So they've determined uh, two of the uh, northern representatives in the provincial playdowns. Colin Davison from uh, the Shamrock as well as Jamie King of St. Albert. We'll keep you posted on how those playdowns are going. Well, here's Mike Vavrick right now. And it's a big shot if he can get behind that uh, uh, guard if he is playing the out turn here, which I think he probably is. Uh, he could uh, have a chance for more than uh, even two points. Well, that's why it was so important for Kevin Martin to hit and stay with that, that first rock. Kevin was trying to hit and roll to the inside. He hit and rolled to the outside. He rolled too far. Here comes that out turn. As it approaches the hog line, he is for sure past that front guard with lots to spare. They want to make sure they get this thing in here. And he's by the guard with lots. That out turn just simply does not pull. And it's not going to vary as deep as what they had hoped, but it makes for an interesting shot for Kevin Martin. Well, if Kevin can see, uh, he can see it all, and if he uh, hits it dead on, he might get a double here and be laying three himself. Well, if he just gets by that front one, well, you're absolutely right. Just half weight off the nose, eh? Just off the nose. I can yeah. see a little more than all of it. Okay. Taking quite a bit of ice for a takeoff. Boy, the way that out turn has been working, I it's agree with you 100%. Beat. Half weight. Well, they can't afford to get, uh, not take enough ice and rub that front one, so. Well, we saw Kevin Park with uh, his yeah. rock come down here with that out turn. Very, very quiet weight, and it didn't break up at the end. And, uh, uh, Martin's giving about an inch less ice than he did on on Park's uh, one there. He, they had center ice for, for Kevin Parks, but so they've uh, tightened up the ice just a wee bit. All right, Jackie, let's see how he does. Kevin comes easy. out with that out turn. Easy. Right on the broom. It's easy right off the bat. He's got big weight. He's got He's more than hack weight. Off He's it. got more than hack weight on this thing. They say off it. It's trying to move right now. It's not going to move enough to get the double for sure. He's going to get the front rock, and he's going to roll off the four foot back into the a safer shot. Rock will he stay for a shot? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And he will force Mike Fabric to hit and stay for maybe. We don't know yet. Two. And a very tricky spot, a spot on the ice right now for Mike Vavrick. That's that out turn that's been staying there. In fact, a couple of them maybe had a little bit of a drift to him, and he's not taking much ice here, but uh, that's exactly the same ice that Kevin took on his hip, and he rolled a little too far. I'll bet you 20 bucks there's going to be a measurement this end. <laughs> <laughs> Any takers? Uh, it's oh. so like a woman taking the sure thing like that. I just overheard Kevin talking, and he thinks he's got it. And Mike Baverick thinks he's got it. Wish I'm going to go it. with Jackie Ray and, and bet on the measurement on that one. The umpire better start looking for the measuring stick because they couldn't find the biter stick uh, the other night for about a minute. Well, here is the same shot Kevin Martin had that he couldn't stay on. Let's see how well Mike Vavrick does. He plays it very quietly, which he has to do, and they're quite happy with it. Now it straightens out. That out turn does not break very much. I think he's got it right on the bugle. Yes, he does. A good shot by Mike Vavrick. He gets one for sure as the Grand Prairie crowd respond. And now they will have to bring out the stick and find out if indeed it's two. That is a very, very important measurement in this game. This could be the game, you know. <laughs> That's oh. what's so incredible about it. It actually could be the way things are going this game. Well, Raverick knows he's got a tie for sure, and uh, he was pretty confident that he was laying shot rock, and it's going to be uh, really interesting to watch this measure. Well, a lot of times, uh, Hector, when you look over a rock uh, like that, uh, you get a pretty good idea who was shot, and then you go back and look at the hole in the button that sometimes is a little off-center. It's not uh, completely right. And so that's why they, they can never be sure if that, that hole on the button happens to be a little off-kilter. It can change the whole picture as the official comes out. They got the measuring stick that uh, measures a thousandth of an inch, so they're going to be no tie, I don't think, in this measure. It just moves the little gauge on top. He just wants a little movement on the top of the measuring stick by the hands on that clock there. You can see it moves just a little bit. 
And that is the Mike Fabric Rock. Let's see if it moves now on the Kevin Martin Rock. Boy, is that close. It did not touch is it at all. It, it did not touch it at all. Ooh, big end for Mike Fabric. Big end for Mike Fabric. It all started when uh, Kevin Parker, his first one, was trying to clear a front one and rolled over and partially guarded his own rock. And uh, Kurt Bollerson made a nice draw around, but it was kind of open. And Kevin Parker just stayed there long enough that he rubbed it onto their own. And uh, that one was, uh, boy, we're that close on that measure. Now, before we pick up the action, and is what is turning out to be a very tension-filled final in the 1992 Alberta Labatt Tankard here at the Leduc Curling Club, let's take a break and hear from our sponsor. The Northern Alberta Curling Association is proud to host the 1992 Alberta Labatt Tankard. The NACA provides the following services to the curlers in Northern Alberta. Management of playdowns, promotion of curling, education in the sport, administration functions, NACA, a curling tradition since 1918. Pepsi is a proud sponsor of the Alberta Tankard, and 1992 marks the 35th year of Pepsi support for curling in Canada, including the Pepsi Juniors from provincial and territorial playdowns right up to the national championships being held this year in Vernon, BC. This is the longest running corporate sponsorship in any amateur sport in Canada. In 1992, Pepsi is also a proud sponsor of Team Canada, who will compete in Albertville, France. Pepsi, gotta have it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, boy, we pick up action here on the seventh end of the Alberta men's, provincial men's final uh, at the Ledoux Curling Club with Mike Baverick of Grand Prairie picking up a big deuce on the sixth end to lead by a score of two to one over defending champion Kevin Martin. And the game is on right now, Hector. Make no mistake about that. That corn broom of Kevin Martin's could come into effect down there. Right off the bat, Baverick put his first rock in the house. Kevin didn't even look at it, threw up a corner guard, and I saw that rock of Don Bartlett's must have pulled a good eight, nine feet down there. So there's going to be some action down there on the seventh end. Wow. All right, we've been talking about your old third, Ron Anton, one of the great shot makers uh, in the history of the game. Jackie Ray is going to talk to him right now. Thanks very much, Wes. Uh, Ron, uh, an exciting uh, six, and it could be the turning point, too. Well, yes, it uh, looks like it, but obviously uh, Kevin will have to get uh, more aggressive, and uh, I think that uh, he certainly has the horses and the capacity to do that, and uh, I look for it to be an exciting finish. Ron Anton is the, the coach of the national team. Will you be going off to the Olympics with the Martin Forsen? Uh, yes, uh, I'll be uh, joining them for the week in Elberville, and uh, certainly uh, there, uh, there won't be very much for me to do with the, the way those guys play. I think it's just a matter of getting them mentally prepared and, and uh, check out the opposition and make sure that, uh, that uh, uh, we, we use a style of play that will be effective. Uh, I guess, of course, you're going in uh, playing um, a different sort of game of curling with the uh, with the Moncton roping in in effect. Uh, how have you been preparing them for that? Well, they've uh, they were, they've been working on it uh, very thoroughly. Uh, they've gone to several bounce fields where the rule has been used, and uh, I think they're probably as informed uh, on the rule as uh, as anybody in the world. And I think uh, that they can play it very effectively. They've they've shown that already. The ice, from what you hear, is fairly straight over there. It'll be straight and it'll be fast. What rocks do they use? Well, they tend to uh, to use rocks that uh, that aren't uh, honed in the same way as ours, and uh, so therefore they don't curl as much. Uh, some of them haven't been sharpened maybe in 30 or 40 years. Oh, that's incredible. So, wh what have you been doing all season long with them? Well, I've been uh, watching them uh, become adjusted to their style of play, getting to know the fellows individually. Uh, uh, scouting their games and uh, and just uh, helping them as much as I, I can in terms of uh, the needs that they have and and actually probably most of the work has been done by their coach uh, Jules Ochar who uh, who is certainly capable of uh, and has worked with uh, those uh, those guys for a long time. Thank you very much, Ron Ann. Oh, you're welcome. The national coach of the Olympic team. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Ron. He goes to the same barber as you and Jerry Wilson, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, that's about as. Uh, Smiley as Ron Atten gets. Uh. <laughs> he told me he had a full head of hair before he started curling with you, Hector, and uh, now there he is. Little polish, little scalp massage, and he's out of the shop. Forward weight's good, Dano. 
Uh, well, we got action here. We got lots of action, as we predicted for the seventh end. Uh, and Kevin Martin down two to one, but he has the hammer on the seventh end. And right now, Mike Fabric has got two rocks, as you can see, and a rock out in front. It's not really guarding him. And Dan Petrick is going to try an in turn. He's got a chance to kill them both. He'd like to roll it inside. An inside roll behind covers, what Kevin wants right here. That in turn is hanging out there. I don't know if he's going to hit the insider. Yes, he's got a chance to make this perfect. There he oh, goes. There's the inside shot. roll. Kevin tries to get the rock out. He can't. But a good shot by Dan Petrick. Boy, and after five ends, the percentages are very high. 90% for Dan Lemux and Ralph Brust is at 95%. 85 for Kurt Bollerson. 85 for Michael Vavrick for an 89% average. And... Uh, Boy, Don Bartlett at 95%, uh, Dan Petrick at 95, ADC for Kevin Park, and 94 for Kevin Martin, and uh, you can't play much better than that with these two teams. Who is this guy, Dan Lemoix? He's, uh, he's a fellow from uh, <laughs> just uh, just out of uh, Quebec City, actually. <laughs> well, though, the way they're going now, it's like, it's not Dan Lemieux, it's Dan Lemoix, is how you say it, I think. At any rate, he's an excellent curler as we get back to the action, and here's Ralph Brust with his shot using an out turn after that great shot by Dan Petrick. He is just trying to come down to it. At this point, Mike Fabrick would be content if he can hold Kevin Martin to just one, so he's trying to play the freeze right down to this rock, and if he makes it, he will put Kevin in a spot where he'll have a tough time getting through. Now, that's an excellent shot. He is frozen solid. Uh, there's maybe a... Oh. A quarter of an inch, maybe, space. So it is tight. Well, it certainly it was an excellent shot, shot because it's not going to be a really big end as a result of that shot. And Kevin might have a tough time getting two. All right, here's an update on the Northern Men's Playdowns. The C event final has been completed. And Chris Happel of Chauvin defeated Curtis Peterson of the Avenir by a score of 5-1. to one. They shook hands after eight ends in that game. Well, sorry to see Curtis go, but he did a good showing. He lost in A final and C final and uh, uh, did the club proud. He's on the guard. Dan Petrick trying to come in and stick one out in front, just rubbed the guard. He had the good weight on that one, Hector, but that one moved a little further than uh, Kevin Martin thought it would. Boy, I think if he wouldn't have touched that, he might have even came down and pushed that yellow one uh, onto his own red a little bit. Uh, boy, did it ever come at the, at the end. That broke. Wade Johnson, Greg Leggett, Mike Crinbull, other members of Chris Happel's fine rink from Chauvin. So congratulations to them. Congratulations to Jamie King rink. And congratulations to the Colin Davison rank of the Shamrock. They will represent the northern part of the province in the provincial junior men's curling playdowns. Well, quite a break for uh, Mike Vavrick. Uh, now he can put his own guard on there. He doesn't mind if they get one. If he comes a little heavy here, he can push it out of the rings, and that's exactly what he's trying to do here. That's right. He's just playing about uh, backboard weight and trying to lie three here. This has got to move. This has got to move. It's got to break. Now it breaks. He's got the perfect weight. He's going to have a beautiful shot. Watch this. Watch this. Both behind cover. Awesome. That's a great shot. That's perfect. That's all. I'll tell you, as the old saying is, they came to play, and they haven't missed many. And, uh, you know, it's putting uh, Kevin uh, Martin in a pretty tough situation here. There's <laughs> one biting the forefoot, one in front of the forefoot guarded, and one back in the 12 foot. And uh, it's time to wake up now. Let's he go. can't uh, really freeze to any of them and be shot. He's going to try to freeze along the right-hand side. I think, uh, if you, I don't know if you heard that I on heard that it. mic. <laughs> Kevin Park said to the front, he says, time to wake up now. Let's go. <laughs> A little alarm clock message there from third man Kevin Park, who's very competitive, just like the rest of his team. Don Bartlett and Dan Petrick trying to wake up. Let's go. Here comes Kevin Park. Let's see if they can come alive. They need a brilliant shot here to get out of there in a jam. Make no mistake about that. Here comes his intern. It starts to move real early. I mean, this one started to move right off the get-go as it comes toward the hog line. They're moving hard. They're pushing it hard now. I don't know if he's got enough weight to move anything. They got to brush hard. They got to brush hard. Great shot. Thank you. Well, that's in there for second shot, is it not, Jackie and Jerry? Yes, it is. Well, that's a good shot. That's a good shot by... Uh, Kevin Park, he would like to have gotten shot rock by it being just a little more to the left, but that's not a bad shot right there. 
Well, some of the other problems are playing off and in uh, New Brunswick, the Jerry Mitchell team that was in last year, Gary Mitchell uh, uh, is playing a sudden death game uh, today against Mike Kennedy. So it's uh, going to be a sudden death there. Kennedy beat Mitchell 7-5 to force a sudden death game. UConn uh, still hasn't decided yet. Uh, they're playing around Robin in the playoff. And um, Steve Moss has a 4-1 and one record. And Buck Benny is a 3-2. and two. If Moss beats uh, Barron today, it's all over. Yeah, well, I phoned up there yesterday. There's not too many familiar names uh, up there in Yellowknife battling it out for uh, their berth to the Briar. As far as the Scott Tournament of Hearts is concerned for the ladies Canadians, uh, the Maritime teams are all out now. Uh, Heidi Hanlon is back, as is Kim Dolan of Prince Edward Island, Colleen Jones of Nova Scotia, and uh, Sue Ann Bartlin is back in from Newfoundland. There's Kurt Balderson with his intern. He's just trying to cover up any more shots on that intern. Comes toward the center of the house, and he just touches that guy, and he puts it just about where he wanted it. Boy, every shot is getting uh, a little bit tighter, although it does give uh, Kevin Park a chance, or Kevin Martin a chance to come around that one. We can uh, just turn their mics up here. We might be able to hear what they're talking about. Very here. See, I make the board weight shot. He should have a double, shouldn't he? He had it right on the beaker looking good. Whatever you like. I don't preference. That's a good shot. You can lay it right here. That's great. I'm just not sure the hole's big enough. Oh, yeah, it's plenty big for sure. Okay, well, let's do it then. I'd like to chip it out a few inches and roll. Well, that's what I don't, I don't think we need to, though. Hit the blue. Okay. Well, you heard it. He wants to draw down and uh, hit the well, actual the red. He must have color blind, color just like you. It's uh -huh. white rocks. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I was right out along. I should have known. Well, Kevin Park thinks, you know, he's thinking of the ultimate on this shot. He would, he thinks he can come through that hole and maybe tap that yellow rock uh, back a little bit and allow them to lie too. Skip Martin says, "Hey, let's just play the corner freeze. Let's be shot rock and let's them let them make a move." Uh, good thinking by Kevin uh, Martin. Uh, Kevin Park certainly had the weight with that first shot of his. Just line perfect. Here, it just line. jerked a little, a line. little too yeah. far. Okay, line's good. Line's real good. Clean. He's in. Oh, off. He's in. Oh, oh. Clutter bend. Off. Oh. Stay close. Whoa. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. He's got lots Stay of weight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Line's real good. Oh. Hurry. Yeah. Moving now. Hurry. Oh. Now they're going for that back one. Oh, perfect shot. What a beautiful shot by Kevin Park. Boy, they needed that one, Hector. Boy, and did it ever come over uh, in the last uh, eight or ten feet? It just came over about four feet. And uh, a nice shot. It's very tricky now for... Uh, Mike Bradbury, because mm -hmm. he can't afford to hit that one, and he might hit it right onto his back one, be laying, uh, mm -hmm. and giving two up there, and, and uh, so he, I don't know what they're going to do here. <laughs> uh, that was a great shot. Boy, did the Kevin Martin Rink ever need that precision shot by Kevin Park, because they, they were in a hole. Two great shots by Kevin really have got them for the, for the time being, anyway, out of a big jam. Well, he said this is the time to wake up, and he sure woke up this game making two great shots. Maybe he wasn't talking to the front end. Maybe he was talking to himself. Do you ever do that? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> my team would leave and leave me there by myself, so I had to do something. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have a discussion right once again. Now time comes into play. Now, obviously, uh, the Mike Fabric rink are not too worried about time, but each team, in case you haven't been following all week, has allowed 75 minutes to complete 10 ends of play, and they get one one-minute timeout along the way. From what I can figure out that they are deciding now, they're looking at the, the nose hit on their stone that is just in front of the rings and, and looking at sending it straight back onto that Martin stone in the top four foot. While they're talking about it, let's go and hear a word from our sponsor. The Northern Alberta Curling Association is proud to host the 1992 Alberta Labatt Tankard. The NACA provides the following services to the curlers in Northern Alberta. Management of playdowns promotion of curling, education in the sport, administration functions, NACA, a curling tradition since 1918. Pepsi is a proud sponsor of the Alberta Tankard, and 1992 marks the 35th year of Pepsi support for curling in Canada, including the Pepsi Juniors from provincial and territorial playdowns right up to the national championships being held this year in Vernon, BC. This is the longest running corporate sponsorship in any amateur sport in Canada. In 1992, Pepsi is also a proud sponsor of Team Canada, who will compete in Albertville, France. Pepsi, gotta have it. 
All right, here we go. Mike Fabric has decided he's going to play an out turn and try and drive his own rock in front of the house back onto those two rocks belonging to Kevin Martin. If he makes this perfect, Martin's in a big jam. Here comes the out turn. They jump on it right away. That rock is moving just a little bit. It's going to hit the inside of the rock. Let's see the end result. Goes back and oh, hits a no. Martin rock and a great break for Kevin Martin. Mike Fabric was inside on that shot. That rock was breaking all the way, Hector. Well, he uh, was uh, uh, right from the start. They start sweeping it, uh -huh. and uh, he couldn't hit it any worse. He was only laying. Kevin Martin was only laying one before he shot, and now he's laying two. And and uh, what a tough break for Mike Fabric. <laughs> that incredibly was, you know, Kurt, as soon as you let it go, Kurt was yelling them on it, and uh, they were on it all the way, and it just uh, just was going from the minute it let go of his hand. Yeah, at the moment it let go, they jumped on it, and it was going. There was and quite a sigh of relief on Kevin Martin's face we've as seen, that rock came into play. We've seen a lot of the boring sides of curling this week with the blank ends. We're, in the last two ends, we're seeing the exciting side of curling with lots of rock and play, lots of opportunities for spectacular shots two great shots by kevin park certainly turned this end around mike vavrick had he made that shot could have been lying four and really put the heat on kevin martin and all of a sudden that rock pulled too much for vavrick and kevin martin sits in there lying two and he's going to try and cover him up don't forget that kevin martin has the last rock on this seventh end and he trails by a score of two to one and, uh, you know, Mike Vavrick didn't really have a choice of what he could play there. He couldn't play the intern hit. He could either hit it right onto his own. He was just a little unfortunate, and uh, he had to play the shot, and uh, just didn't work out for him. Well, this is really interesting, because if Kevin puts the lid on those two babies that are sitting in there, what's Mike Vavrick do? Well, he'll probably have to play another raise to try to kill at least one of them, and... Uh, We'll have to wait and see how uh, good uh, Kevin is going to be covering this one. Kevin is well out on the broom, and it looks to me like he's got lots of weight. They're waiting for that to break now. Now it moves. Now it moves. They want it right it's in It's heavy. They're going for the shot. wick. He's going in. Oh, boy. Well, he, I, I, I'm, I'm positive they were playing the guard initially, weren't they, Jerry? Absolutely. They were playing the guard. Bartlett halfway down said he was heavy. Then he said it caught something. So it probably overcurled a bit for him, too, but he was heavy. Well, it looks like he's laying three. It's going to be very close in that situation, but uh, Mike does have a, a shot, and he can't come and freeze anything. He put near has to, to hit something there, and uh, boy, oh, boy, it's a, a very interesting end right now. A great shot by Kevin Martin on the fifth end. He had to draw the forefoot. Great sweeping by his team. Got it in there to pick up one. Mike Vavrick had to use a measurement to pick up two on the sixth end. And boy, all hell has broken loose here on the seventh end at the Ladue Curling Club. As Mike Vavrick and his team discuss for the second time in this end what they should do. And well, they should discuss it, I suppose, because they're looking at three. And if Vavrick misfires on this one, it could be game set and match. Jerry, what are your thoughts? Do you think, uh, who do you think is third shot? It's close, isn't it? Or? I think uh, Martin has three in there. Can you see better? Oh, and you guys have a good overhead shot right now. Oh, it's, it's closer than an automatic three, I think. Uh, that yellow even, mm -hmm. very close. Uh, From the overhead shot, it looks like he's only lying two. You're right, Wes. I can see the overhead. That's why I was looking just from this angle on the ice, and I, I was thinking that uh, Robert did have shot their third shot. That's a, that could be a big break with Martin going in deep. If you know he guards it up, Vavrick probably doesn't have a shot, and he's doing a Hail Mary, and he has uh, given Vavrick a, a chance with this. What would you do, Hector, on well, this shot if you were throwing it? If he can hit uh, half of that one that's open, he's going for the one that Kevin just threw. I don't think he can get more than uh, maybe two of the Red Rocks out of there by hitting that one. Unless he's playing the out turn, maybe, and... Uh, I think he has to be. He has to be throwing the out turn. He's going to try and... The rock will not move. He's going to try and get the inside of that rock and spill those two rocks out behind and uh, let Kevin try and uh, go from there. Be my guess. But we never well, know about Mike Baverick. He messed us up yesterday. Well, if he can hit all he can see of the rock that, he's, uh, that is in the open, he might roll behind his own and uh, make it very tough for uh, Kevin Martin. Well, we're about to find out. Here's the out turn that Mike didn't throw well the last time. He lets this one go a little smoother. I'll guarantee you that. He's right out on the broom this time. Now they get off it. 
They don't want to wick that front one, I don't think. This is very oh, close. They've got to let it pull just a little bit, and he gets a couple of rocks, rolls out himself. And Definitely line one. And uh, Kevin Martin will take that, and what he's got is a draw to the four-foot circle for two. Exactly the same draw that he had in the first end, but he doesn't have to be, or on the fifth end, but he doesn't have to be quite so close to the four. Vavrik's rock just didn't come. His first one came lots when he threw it, and this one just stayed straight, and uh, luckily, uh, got two of them out. He was trying to get that shot rock. He wanted to hit that first, spill a couple, and maybe roll over behind his, his other one on the far side, but it just hung there on him. And it left Kevin Martin lying one. And as easy as this shot is, with all the pressure that's on Kevin Martin, plain and simply isn't easy. Well, it took five ends to get one point on the board, and now they're with a good draw here. There'll be four more points in the last two ends. Mike Fabric got control on the sixth end with his deuce. Kevin Martin can get that control right back. He needs to bite the forefoot. Right off the bat. It's okay, guys. Kevin Park just said he doesn't look light, I'll tell you that. And uh, he does look like he has lots, though they are keeping it clean right now. Kevin's back there like he doesn't want to look at it. Kevin Martin says, I think it's all right. Well, he's all the way there without sweeping. We know that. He could be heavy. He could be heavy. He's got a great shot. Well, i tell you what. He was only heavy in the sense that he didn't need his sweeping. You think you'd throw to your sweepers in that situation. He threw it, made it all on his own. A great shot by Kevin Martin. And he is back in control now, picking up a big deuce and a very interesting seventh end. And he moves in front by a score of three to two. And I don't think this game is over yet. <laughs> it was interesting watching uh, third man uh, Kevin Park, Jack. I think he go went to the same school of anxiety as you. <laughs> Kevin was trying to sneak out the back of the hack when he let it go because he was sure that Kevin Martin was uh, heavy. And he certainly was there all the way. Make no mistake about that. Us uh, boys were touching it every once in a while, <laughs> sweeping, and that's worse yet. You uh, you think, oh, he's, oh, he's throwing it through the house right here. He's uh, one up seems like a, a lot to him after being down one for an end and uh, things happening just right for him on the seventh end. Well, you just saw Don Bartlett throw his first one through. Now the situation playing the eighth end and Mike Fabric has the last rock playing eight. The score is 3-2 in favor of Martin. And Martin is completely content right now to hit everything in sight. There'll be no fooling around as far as he's concerned. And if Vavrik picks up one on the 10th end, they'll go to an extra end. Martin has the hammer, and that's what he's working on right now. Well, he's had a little trouble uh, clearing on the 6th end. Uh, Kevin Park hit and stayed in front of the house, and uh, that's what caused the two-ender that uh, Vavrik did pick up. So it's not, uh, there's only three ends left to go, but uh, you got to, you got to peel uh, 21 rocks and say, and then the extra end is another seven rocks. So there's a lot of rocks that have to be, be, be peeled off before uh, uh, this game is over. Well, we just had a word on the Northern Alberta Junior Women's Playdowns, which are underway at Beaumont. And uh, yesterday at Beaumont, Carrie Dean of Beaumont uh, won the A section. They're playing the C section final right now, and it's Deanne Shields of the Shamrock against Trudy oh, Winesness of Riley. And that game is just about set to uh, get underway. I don't know who won B section, but we do know the A section winner was Carrie Dean of Beaumont. And in the final C is Deanna Shields and Trudy uh, Winesness of Riley. So good luck to those girls. Are you sure you didn't have too much wine last night? <laughs> well, no, I don't drink that much anymore, Hector. Just, just enough to enjoy country music, that's all. <laughs> and Jackie's smiling. She works for CFCW. <laughs> Well, they're just trying to keep it clean here on the eighth end. We're talking about the Kevin White. What battles these young men have had over the last three or four years. Last year, same situation. Off, off. Same off two hit. teams. Right off. Right off. Kevin Martin winning the final game by a score of four to two. Earlier this year in Smithers, they met. And it was Mike Fabrick's turn as he took out Kevin Martin in the quarterfinals in a low-scoring game. Then earlier this week, 
in the round robin play. They blanked the first couple of ends. Kevin Martin picked up two in the third end, stole one on four, and that was all she wrote. They shook hands after seven, but Kevin up by a score of four to one. And here we are with only three ends left in regulation play. Kevin Martin leads Mike Baverick three to two, and you can't get it much closer than that. Well, Danny Lemieux is 93% for Vavrick, 89 for Rolf Brust, and 88% uh, and for Ket, uh, Kurt uh, Ballerson, 77 for Mike uh, Vavrick for an 87% average, which is very high, 93, 89, 75, and 85 for the Martin team for an 86% average, so it's uh, anybody's game, and of course, the score is only three to two. Boy, Lemieux and Brest, it's a shame this week is over. You're getting the ball just perfect now. You're becoming an expert in this pronunciation game. Uh, that's okay, Mr. McGomley. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the hitman from Smoky Lake, from a uh, curling family out of that neck of the woods. Dan Petrick with the out turn. And Kevin Martin does not really care. He's working on an extra end right now. He'd take it sooner if he could get it, get a couple of misses. But you wouldn't want to bet that way, the way Mike Fabric and company are playing. Well, they do what they can do best. They're good hitters, and they can peel all day, and this ice is so good that it's uh, easy to do that. And uh, all Mike Fabric can do is uh, keep putting him up there and hope that something happens. There's a hit on the nose or a miss. And here comes Ralph Rust with his in turn. They've got to get something out in front here and hope for the nose hit. I'm talking about play downs all over the place. This is the time of the year for play downs. Right across the country and in North America, the Northern Senior Ladies and the Senior Men's goes again to Hunka's Shamrock Club in a couple of weeks. And you know, you can play in lots of spiels, as Kevin said earlier this week. But there's only once a year you can play in play downs, and there's no more hollow feeling than when you get close and lose. And uh, for, for the poor team here that does lose, it's going to be a very uh, unfortunate because both of these teams are curling so well that, uh, that it's going to be a crime that one of them has to lose. Provincial play downs, not the northern play downs for senior men and ladies at the Shamrock Club in a couple of weeks from right now. Here comes Kevin Park with his first intern just trying to clean it up. A lot of these curlers take their holidays. I mean, it's a big sacrifice for the whole family, not just the curlers themselves. And in order to take the time off uh, to get to this level, of course, it's pretty easy if you're Kevin Park and you let your wife run your business to get time off, or if you're Dan Petrick and you take the whole year off just to curl, pretty easy. But most of the curlers, it's a big sacrifice, not only for them, but for the whole family. Well, it is, and they were very lucky this year. They went to, uh, I think, 14 spiels before Christmas, and uh, they all went uh, together, the four of them. And, uh, you know, not many times a team can get off uh, completely. You know, you have to pick up somebody, one or, one or the other. Of course, Kevin Martin uh, is sitting perfect for that. He uh, quit his job uh, currently uh, working for us at the Avenir, and he owns a business uh, of his own, uh, Thompson Brooms, and he uh, set up at the Otwell Curling Club, and he's got his mother working for him. <laughs> and his dad works for us now, and uh, boy, he's got it made. When I was 25, I. I, did, I was doing the work and, uh, and uh, working for my dad. So it was, uh, he's got a setup that he can curl and have, uh, you know, and that's great for their team to be able to do that. And as a matter of fact, his mom had to work this afternoon, which she wasn't too happy about. So I know she is watching as we speak at the Otwell Curling Club. <laughs> Covering up for her son one more time. And of course, his dad's over the avenue right now, probably late doing the ice because he wants to watch this. <laughs> You'll dock his pay, probably, won't you? Well, if I hear about it, it's docked, eh? <laughs> Everything's clean. This is the way Kevin Martin wants it on the eighth end. We had a great fifth, sixth, and seventh ends to watch in this game with some brilliant shots and lots of excitement, and it's got back down to the basics now for all the obvious reasons. Well, how many times does two good teams uh, play and there's not much gambling and all of a sudden there's a couple of ends of gambling and then the guy gets out if he gets lucky and gets ahead and that's exactly what Kevin Martin is right now. He's only one up, but uh, it's a big point if they can keep peeling here. There's Kurt Balderson with his first rock. And that's about all that the Mike Baverick rink can do. So it's not too heavy on the strategy here. Let's get one out in front and pray a lot. And now Kevin Martin's going to switch it around with his first rock. And if he can put it on the tee line away from that corner guard, he'll force Mike Fabric to come after him. You know, and there's a little bit of strategy involved here. Uh, 
He not only doesn't have to throw at that rock, but if he can come in and get in front of the tee line and uh, force uh, Mike Vavrick to hit and roll out, then he could bury behind that corner guard himself. Mike Vavrick would have to take one. There's Kevin, who, who certainly has curled brilliantly today. Remember the hit and roll out coming up on the sixth end is about the only shot I saw him really miss. There he comes. They want this in the house. They want that thing to pull a little more. He's all the way here again, just like his last rock. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be uh, heavy and give something for him to freeze to, yeah. and I'm sure my library will come to oh. it. Well, that's going to be... Just tee, just tee. It's breaking now, and it's going to be on the four foot. And uh, Mike Fabry can and will freeze to that rock. Now, he can't freeze flush to the rock, I don't believe. He's got to be slightly a little off center, but there is a shot there if he chooses, uh, chooses to go that direction. Oh, he might throw a different it was earlier in the game, but boy, eighth end, uh, you got to have something happen, and there is a rock in play to do something with, so he's going to try and freeze to it. Well, that makes it interesting, gang, because if he doesn't make this perfect and happens to pull a little too much and leaves Kevin Martin with the shot rock, Kevin puts the lid on it, and all of a sudden Michael's got himself a draw to the button to save the end. Well, you know, Mike's drew, uh, drawn very well in the last uh, well, the first game or two. He had a little trouble, and then he got onto the draw weight, and boy, he's made some great ones. Let's see, Mike Fabric with that awesome weight that he's had over the last three or four days. I would bet that he would have the perfect weight. It's just a matter of whether or not the, ro uh, not the Rock does what the Vavrik team hopes it does. Well, they should know the ice by now. Uh, Kevin just threw the draw there, so he, he knew exactly what the ice is going to do, and it's just a question of uh, throwing the right weight. And sometimes, Hector, the ice, uh, you know, with that quiet weight, it can do some funny things. You're waiting for it. makes a little move, and it's gone. Now they're sweeping it all the way. He's well out there on the other side of that center line still. He looks a little lighter than what Kevin Martin was, but they got on this rock. Kevin's didn't need any sweeping. It's coming toward the front of the house. Has he got enough weight? Is he going to be there? He's going to be close, that's for sure. He's going to be awfully close. What a great shot by oh. Mike Fabric. What a great shot by Mike Fabric. Boy, oh boy, he's been throwing some good ones, and uh, it's of course, didn't freeze perfect. The best he could do to be shot rock, and it does give Kevin a chance to hit it on the nose and uh, and spill back at the both of them on the back, and uh, and I'm sure that's what he wants to do. This shouldn't be a tough, uh, extra tough shot for Kevin Martin because they are situated such that Kevin can almost hit it on the nose and spill both of those rocks. Kevin doesn't really care if he stays or not. He can hit it slightly on the outside or he can hit it on the nose. He can't hit it on the inside. That's the only thing that can go wrong with this shot for him. Out he comes with the intern. And lots of weight. Yes, yes, he did. He didn't make any mistake about that. That rock is starting to move now. I think he's going to be perfect. I think he's going to be perfect. Out they go, and he stays around. Good shot by Kevin Martin. He's been awesome in defense of his provincial championship all week long. Well, he's only lost one game right from the city's on. He won five straight uh, he qualified, he qualified out of, uh, didn't have to play in the city, he qualified out of the uh, city spiel. He then won five straight in, uh, in the Northerns and uh, only lost one in the uh, round robin here, and uh, that was to Don Walchuk and a team who curled very well. And, what a great uh, game that was to oh, it was, yes. All right, here comes Mike Fabric. He'll be trying to blank this one. He wants to keep that hammer. And if he's coming home, one down, still has the hammer, he'll take that. He doesn't want to hit and stay on this rock. Doesn't he got well on it. They're not sweeping it. Doesn't want to miss it either. And boy, it's staying right there. Oh, he's got her, has he? Ooh. ooh. <laughs> Kevin Martin bending his knees thinking, what's this, maybe? <laughs> but it was just perfect. It ended up absolutely perfect. And Mike Fabric got what he wanted out of that shot, blank the end. So we go down to nine. And Kevin Martin, the defending Labatt's Friar champion from 1991, walks down the ice in control of this game, up three to two. And you know, there's a lot of pressure on uh, on Martin's team right now, boy. If they may slip up and either miss one of them corner guards or or hit on the nose, it's getting so late in the game a two ender would kill them. So they've got to make a lot of shots here in the next two or three ends and. Uh, Barton's even falling down when he throws a free one through, so that's just uh, 
corner. Well, like you say, he was mentioning last night at the uh, banquet that he does have a bit of a sore back, and as soon as he lets the rock go, I guess he's trying to take some pressure off that rock and uh, does that belly flop. Well, he does it very well. <laughs> Well, you would know about bellies. There's no doubt about that. Here comes Ralph, or the lead man for the uh, Mike Baverick team. Daniel comes out with his intern. Just like the eighth end, I mean, this is going to follow the same pattern until somebody slips up here with the Baverick ring throwing him out in front, the corner guards. And Kevin Martin won't leave any of those out in front until maybe late in the end when he'll do exactly what he did on the eighth end and maybe pull one into the house. Well, it's, uh, he's pretty happy to be doing this. Uh, his team does this so well. He, uh, you know, won the Briar last year, and uh, a lot of his games, boy, when he got ahead, look out. He just kept hitting, and, uh, you know, they got a great team. Dan, uh, Dan Patrick, Don Bartlett, and uh, hey. Kevin Park hey. are just good, great front end for that. They can play both types of games. Hey. Well, whoever wins under on... Can the Greek Hunkas over and under line of six and a half look pretty good right now? Didn't you bet? Not me. Oh, hey. Okay. Not me. My gambling days are over. See, I should have bet because I, I was lucky. I won that draw last night to the bats uh, supplying a room and tickets for the Briar and uh, Regina, and all the other managers are mad at me now because our club won it. And, uh, of course, yeah. uh, the fellow that did win it was Doug Squires, which uh, never thrilled till this year. If he gets down to Regina, boy, he'll be taking it up serious. Of course, because you won that free trip to Regina, you'll probably be buying all your club members uh, free drinks for the rest of the week. That'd be the class act, wouldn't it? Is this getting all the way to the Avenir, this broadcast? <laughs> I'll bet you there's a bunch of them in the Avenir curling rink and all the curling rinks in reach of Shaw Cable, Cable 10, watching this one this afternoon. You can't get any closer than this, and this is, this is for the right to go to the granddaddy of them all. The well, Briar. There's nothing bigger for a Canadian team is to go to a Briar. The next oh, thing oh. is to win it. You know, you can even go to Worlds and it isn't as exciting as winning oh, a oh. Canadian championship. You're playing all the teams from Canada, every province and territory, and boy, what a thrill. Speaking yeah. of Shaw Cable, I'd like to thank Ken Seller and his fine staff for doing great coverage of this event. The volunteer staff have just been excellent. They sure have. They're nice to work with and uh, enjoyed it. And I tell you, they did such a good job of camera work. Jerry, you even look good all week. And that's great, isn't it? Just don't take your hat off. <laughs> I was talking to Jerry last night. Of course, I'm kidding, because you go to the same barber as he does. Now, if there had been a, a hair fairy instead of a tooth fairy, you'd both be millionaires today, wouldn't you? Yes, and uh, I had my choice, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a Vavrik rock that's coming into the house. Kevin Martin may take this one all the way through with that big corn broom just a-whistling. Well, they might have wanted it in the back of the tee line, hoping to hit somebody hits and stays and maybe freeze to it, but uh, I doubt. I think they'd have rather had it out in front, and uh, just a little bit of a slip-up. Tough to pull behind that one. That one's out of the rings, I'm sure, Hector, but uh, Kevin, it's in play, so Kevin's not going to fool around with it. He wants the hitman to get it out of there, period. He does not want to stay on this one, for sure. It looks like Dan's all right, as usual. Made a move that he kind of panicked on, but he's going to be fine. Well, he had to take it out because it would be something to come to or maybe even hit a rock onto if they didn't. And uh, he's only got... Uh you know, an end and a half right now before the, the uh, to keep peeling and then the extra end if uh, Mike makes a draw to, to, to make it go an extra end. But it only takes one slip up, one hit on the nose, one miss, and boy, uh, the game changed right around. Is Ralph bust? <laughs> Ralph is coming to the intern side of the house with this corner guard, trying to change the position on the ice, trying to get the Martin rink out of their rhythm just a little bit if they possibly can. Well, it's been nice working with you, Wes, and with, with any luck at all, uh, probably won't see you till next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get together and curl in the seniors next year, Hector, if you promise not to yell at me, okay? Okay. That's almost impossible, isn't it? Well. <laughs> I got a hat. We curled the Yuletide one time. 
uh, with, uh, with your son, uh, Heck Jr., as a matter of fact, and one of the talented Park family, Scott Park. We went very well. I had a cap made up by Ed Lupo. It just hey, read in big letters, says, don't yell at me, Heck. And you didn't. Hard. And we lost. <laughs> Good job, There's a great shot once again by Kevin Park. Boy, I still hearken back to those two great draw shots of his down there in seven when it looked like Kevin Martin was in trouble. And then his third man came up with two clutch shots and they seemed to turn the end right around. No, that's, a, that's, that's the difference between an average curler and a great one. And uh, I know on the sixth end when they, when Mike Ravery did get two points, a park, uh, park hit and stayed with one in the front, and then he was a little bit on the outside and then left them a second shot, which ended up on the measure being second shot. And, uh, you know, he came back with two of the doozers on the next end, and uh, you know, that's a sign of a great uh, curler when they can do that. Miss Kurt Balderson. Oh, yes. Having to live in the shadow of this very fine Martin rink so far the last couple of years can happen. Can it, Hector, where you come along and you get a great rink like this Fabric rink and, and, and you're a bit unfortunate because right at the same time there's a rink like Kevin Martin's team. It's, it's happened in history when the Ernie Richardsons were dominating, when you were dominating and Matt Baldwin was dominating. There's a lot of outstanding rinks just came around at the wrong time. Well, you know, there was uh, teams like the Watchorns, there was teams like Lukowicz from the South, there was teams like uh, Northcott when uh, I was playing, and boy, oh boy, uh, at the same time, there's somebody great from the South of the Peace River, and uh, unfortunately, somebody's got to lose, and uh, uh, you, you pretty much wish you could get the person to play down here. They had such good teams. I always remember in the mid-80s when I was up in the provincials, uh, it was the men's uh, provincials going on in Grand Prairie, and that was the year Ed Lukowicz won, and uh, he had Pat Ryan's number, and he, uh, he beat Pat Ryan every time, and remember we were up, uh, we were discussing the games afterwards, and at that time Penny Ryan was uh, pregnant with her and Pat's first child, and they said, Pat, what are you going to name your first kid? And they said, well, we're going to name him Ed and beat him. <laughs> Oh, the great sense of humor she has, knows about curling, very personal. Well, too bad she can't cook, I'd say. Well, she does. It's called a restaurant. I'd say, uh, well, no, I talked to her husband, and she's very upset the other day when she found out you can't preheat a microwave. Can you believe that? Yeah, and my husband is really hurting. <laughs> <laughs> Good old what's-his-name, you mean? Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> Jackie Ray's husband, good old what's-his-name. Well, he's uh, made his day today, though. He was on the team that beat you girls this morning, and... Uh, that's why he's my ex-husband. <laughs> no, that would make him too happy. Forget it. There is Kurt Balderson with the intern, trying to move trying to move the corner guards around a little bit. They need every... Use every little edge they can possibly force. As a Martin rank are just curling to perfection. Either one of these teams would will really represent Alberta uh, superbly in this year's Briar. You know, there's a lot of times when you see two teams playing in the final and you say, boy, it'd be a crime if the one team lost because they'd be the best team. And, boy, you sure can't say that today. It's uh, two great teams in there. And uh, as you were saying, either one of them would uh, represent us well. And Darwin Davidex back there smiling. This is what he preached right off the bat. This was his idea. He didn't make the decision all on his own, but he convinced people to make the change in the format. And they've got the two best teams out here in a sudden death. And no matter who wins this game, Alberta is well looked after. Well, if he'd have made a better decision back in 69, uh, he wouldn't have had eight scored against him. <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. You made a mistake once along the line, surely. Here comes Kevin Martin with his out turn. He doesn't want to stick around on this. And if he does, he wants to roll to the center of the house. He's going to hit it on the outside and get out of there. Everything under control so far for Kevin Martin. Nowhere to hide for Mike Vavrick. It only takes one uh, hit on the nose uh, to uh, hurt you, and, uh, and of course, uh, on this on this end, uh, he won't even be putting a corner guard. He'll be coming into the rings and hoping to either Kevin misses one or he gets blanket, and uh, he's only got one end left to muster up uh, more than one point to, 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 to uh, win this game, and boy, the last two ends, there hasn't been any rocks at all around. There's been a, there was a side one, and Kevin drew the open side last, uh, last end. Now, if Kevin can hit and stay with his uh, last rock on this end, it makes the last rock on the end uh, a little interesting because Mike Vavrick certainly wants to hit and roll out. He doesn't want to hit and stay and allow Kevin Martin to have the hammer coming home. 
in a tied up curling game. Well, there's been quite a few teams that won the Profits two years in a row. And uh, back in uh, Matt Baldwin's day in 58 and 59, he represented, he did represent five times eventually. Ron Northcott represented in, uh, uh, in uh, 59, 10 years later, 58 and 59. And then uh, we were there two years in a row in 60 and 61. And uh, of course, uh, Lukowicz went and repeated a couple times, and so did uh, Pat Ryan. He was in there two years in a row. So they uh, they wouldn't be doing a first if they happened to win this game and be going for the second year in a row. Well, first things first. They've got to look after Mike Vavrick here this afternoon, the Kevin Martin team. As Kevin goes down with his out turn, he'd like to stay on this one and uh, make Mike Vavrick's last rock a little more difficult than just firing it through the house. And it's got to be a sad feeling for uh, the very front end and the team. You know, they, they got to get two to win this game or, or they're going to have to steal one on the extra end. And uh, it's just a sad feeling. Not much time left. Uh, Kevin's got this perfect. That's what they wanted right there. It's just perfect. Kevin's been letter perfect with exception. The only shot I can remember him even coming close to missing was that shot coming up six when he, he rolled a little too far on a, on a quiet takeout. Well, he's curled good all week, but so is Mike Vavrick. They all have. Their percentages have yeah. been so good. The ice is so good here that, uh, boy, oh, boy, you know, it, uh, it's worked out that the two best teams did get here eventually. And uh, uh, there was a tough luck curler in the, in the bunch when Don Walchuk lost three straight. I thought he was going to, you know, he was just getting, going so strong from Christmas on. He was just a little unlucky, and sometimes it all happens in one day. Well, just on those touch shots that Don seemed to not be quite there on his three losses. Oh, he'll be back. He's been in the provincials and can the Canadian won the world playing uh, every position. He'll be back. Ooh, look out, Hector. They're trying to sweep this out. He's going to nose this. He's going to nose this. All right, he did not want that, Hector. Well, exactly what Kevin Martin wanted. He, uh, he has control again. It's tied up. He has last rock. They have to peel just seven rocks uh, and hopefully make his last one, where if he uh, would have rolled out there, he'd have had to peel all this end and all the extra end. Well, it comes down to this. And I thought the way things were going, that Mike would blank that and uh, go for, of course, his two on the 10th end. If he had to take the one, fine, go to the extra end. Martin would have liked that, would have had the hammer. But now it's tied up 3-3, coming home. And Kevin Martin has the last rock and the Provincial Men's Curling Championship. The Labatt Tankard here at the beautiful Le Duc Curling Club could go down to the last rock on the last end. The seal goes to the briar. And Dan Lemieux out with his first rock. And of course, the Mike Fabric rink want this one out in front on the center line. They need some help. They need some garbage out in front. They need something so Mike Fabric, when it comes time to throw his last two rocks, can hide behind, making Kevin Martin make a very tough shot if indeed he is going to win. Uh, we'll be back to pick up the action on the 10th uh, and what could be the final end of this Alberta final after this word from our sponsor. Jerry Wilson would like to welcome all participants and viewers to the Alberta Labatt Tankard and would like to wish the winner lots of success in the upcoming Briar. Jerry has been a member of the Edmonton Real Estate Board since 1974 and is also a member of the MLS Million Dollar Club. For effective, customer-friendly real estate results, call Jerry Wilson at 464-4060. Labatt Breweries of Canada have been the proud sponsors of the Labatt Tankard since 1980. Since that time, we have witnessed some of the finest curling in the world, from Victoria, B.C. to St. John's, Newfoundland. Please accept our invitation to join us at the Leduc Curling Club from January 29th to February 3rd, 1992 to be a part of the Labatt Alberta Provincial Tankard Championships. Dreams for sale. Heritage Custom Homes is now operating in Leduc, Beaumont, and Devon. We can build from your plans or create from our own. For a free consultation, call Bob Kleinmeyer in Beaumont at 929-2744 or Lauren Hostin in Leduc at 986-2100. All right, the leads have exchanged shots while we were away with the uh, Vavrick rink. Of course, trying to get something out in front. 
Don Bartlett peeled the first one off. Dan Lemieux put it right back again. And now here comes the postal clerk with his intern delivery trying to peel it off. Let's it go with the big weight. Got right on in the broom. He looks like he's going to be perfect. A little advertising there, a little sponsor credit for Jerry Wilson. He's in the real estate. He has been the television coordinator. He, I tell you, he's been the coordinator of this whole thing, going between Shaw Cable and us guys doing the uh, description of the game. He has done a great job. Uh, one of our city's top competitive curlers, a former provincial mixed curling champion in uh, Getting together with Shaw Cable and Darwin Daviduck and the NACA and Jackie and you and I, he spent a lot of time. Well, you know, we did 16 games in the Super League this year, and he did a lot of work on that, too. He got all the stats. He was uh, down there every uh, every Wednesday, and, uh, and his dad, Bob, uh, uh, was there every Wednesday for uh, keeping uh, stats. And uh, you, can't, you gotta take your hat off to uh, Jerry Wilson and his dad, and, uh, you know, they did a great job this year. Well, that's tradition, uh, tradition with most of the uh, great curlers, people who have curled, to put something back into the game, which, of course, you have done. Jerry Wilson and his dad are doing. Not only do you get the top curlers, but uh, most of them turn around and say, hey, how can I make it enjoyable for those that come after me? And this is kind of a result of that kind of thinking and hard work that we're seeing this exciting game here today it's exciting curling and a great situation that we've experienced all week long kevin martin doing what he wants to do i mean the ideal si uh, situation for kevin martin uh, would be to looking uh, at one rock in the house to be looking at one rock and have to hit and stay to go to the briar for the second straight year well, i'm sure he's counting rocks yeah there's only has to be four more peels and if he could hit and stay or draw with his last one He'd be doing a, a, a thing that thousands of curlers would, would give their right arm to do is to represent your province in, uh, in the Canadian Championships. And what a place to go, Regina. You know, very knowledgeable curlers. They're sold out pretty well on all their... Uh, uh, it's going to be a full arena, arena watching it. It's a little different this year. Only four sheets of ice, so there'll be morning curling every morning. So you got to get up, too, besides try to stay up late at night. No problem with some of us. There'll be no parties in Regina at the Briar, will there? Well, hopefully not next room to me. <laughs> you used to lead the party sector in your hairy day. Now, of course, I would recommend at your age, uh, don't go near a bed that has a lid on it. You know, you're getting on. <laughs> hey, Dan Petrick going to try and clear that rock off the center line. Well, just wait till next Wednesday. You'll come to the Avenir to curl in a sportsman. I'd see the ice. You won't be able to make a shot on it. <laughs> Well, fortunately, <laughs> after you and I have known each other a long time, we really enjoy your company and great sense of humor very much in the band. This is not going out, but it's away from uh, the center line, the danger area. Well, it's, uh, if, you, if you can't roll it off, that's a place you don't mind rolling it to because uh, Kevin has drawn uh, two, two shots of the forefoot uh, in this game on the, on the other end of the ice, on the fifth end and the seventh. And so you know the Martin team can just, they can just feel how close they are right now. Uh, when Dan saw he was a little tight of the broom there, the intense look on his face when he was calling them to sweep was incredible. And you knew he wanted to roll out when you can, you're this close, you want it bad. And then he apologized to the team for staying around. Why is he going in there? Explain that one to me. Well, it's, uh, I don't know. I think he's so happy to see something out there that he's going to try and come around. Maybe force... Uh, if he can bury there, then it would force uh, Kevin to take the front one off, and then he'd put another one close to the house, and then it's up to Kevin if he wants to hit the front one or not. Eventually, he'd be laying two in the rings in case Kevin rolled out. It's interesting. I think uh, most skips would have just thrown one up on that center line, but not Mike Vavrick, who's done a few things uh, not according to the book and has done them very successfully all week long. He's going right in behind that corner guard. He certainly has the weight, whether or not it jerks enough to bury. Now it grabs. Now it grabs. And he certainly had the weight. Good shot by Kurt Balderson. Now Kevin Park. Let's see if we can hear what they're discussing. Well, he definitely doesn't doesn't want to hit the front one and roll over towards center. Need to worry about it. He's not even thinking of the long raise. He just wants to get rid of that. That's an interesting situation. Well, 
You got to try something. You got to try and get something going. Now Kevin Park's going to go out there to peel this one off, and if they continue to. You know, on the next one, he can put it right back again, put it on the center line, pull it in the house, forcing Kevin to hit and stay with his final rock, who makes for a lot of interesting situations. Well, when you haven't got last rock and you're playing the 10th end, you've got to have something going for you, and I guess this was a little bit of it. I think I had to put another front one out uh, with my first one and my third, and then came in with the second one. And Don't look too worried about this one. Just perfect without the sweeping. Good shot by Kevin Park. You know, those look simple shots, but all of a sudden you're getting down to the short strokes now and a trip to the briar, and even the simplest shot with that pressure is just not that simple. And I'm sure Kevin uh, Martin is going through his head right now. I'm going to probably have to hit and uh, stay with my last one, so he's going to be prepared for it when the time does come. And now Mike Vavrick goes down there and talks things over with his team as to what shot they should play. Dump it out in front, pull one to the side. What would you do? I'd put it right on the center line in front of the house. I'm sure Kevin wouldn't go for the one that's in the house anyway, but you never know. They might get a hit on the nose on this one. How about you, Jerry? I think I'd put one out front. It looks like he's throwing up a partial corner guard. Doesn't look like he's looking for a center line guard with that ice he's giving. Well, he's going to force Kevin Martin to make his last shot, and with the world on your shoulders, the easiest shot can really be a doozy. Here comes Kurt Balderson. Using the intern. He's all the way up here from the looks of that one, halfway down. They're not touching it, they're just looking at it. Here, Kurt yell off Daniel. And he's gonna be out in front of the house, just off the center line. That's been the tricky spot in the ice for hitting, you know, right in that spot. So I think that's why he put it there. He's hoping that they can't afford to take too much ice here. It straightens up, and uh, they dearly like to get a hit on the nose here somewhere and have a better chance of coming on something closer than the 12 foot to come around. Kevin's throwing the intern at it, so he is looking to run them both. He's looking for the double on this one. I think you'd be pretty happy just to get that thing off the front and roll out of play, because I, I doubt very much if that rock on the 12 foot is going to enter into anything. He was definitely looking at it, though. He, li mm -hmm. he lined it up and had a look at it, so that is that is the, the ultimate goal, but of course he would love just to peel it out. If he can scatter everything, you're right. That would be the ultimate. Here comes oh. Kevin Park. Let's see how he does. He could make it worse if he hit it wrong onto that one in the house. He could end up uh, stay on the center. Oh, this one's supposed to be. Let's see what happens here. Back, does he get the back one? He hits it on the nose, and it stays right there, but Kevin will take that one. The, the number one goal of that shot by Kevin Park, and he almost did the ultimate, like Jackie and I were talking and got all three of them out of there. But the big goal was to get that one off the front. Well, if he cuts another half an inch, he could have hit it onto that one, and that one would have rolled into the 8-foot or maybe bit the back of the 12. So he's pretty happy with that one. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks more and more like Kevin Martin is definitely going to have to throw his last one if he wants to get to his second straight briar. What a great game this has been. What a well-curled game this has been. And some great shots and uh, lots of rocks in play on three or four of the ends. And... Uh, Boy, it's just too bad one of these teams has to lose. Dan Petrick sitting there, standing there at center ice. He's had the only miss on this end. It wasn't really a miss. He just didn't get it far enough on the play. And as a result, we've got one rocket. And he's just praying, please, please, let us win this game. And everybody will forget that one. Because if it turns out the other way, and that rock counts over there, Dan will have a tough time getting over that one. Uh, Mike's put another one. He's going to put it more on the center line just in case it's hit on the nose and then he'd have something to come around and I'm sure Kevin's going to go for it. Take it out of there. Well, Kevin's got a better chance of spilling those two now, I think, than uh, Kevin Park did with his. If Kevin hit that thing on the on the outside like he's going to try and do, he could very well uh, spill that back one and yeah. spill them all. And like he said, you could hear him say, I'm going to try and get them both. But you also look, what also could happen is you, you hit too much of it and uh, you give him a better shot that could roll into the eight or four foot if he hits it wrong. Well, I don't think that one, that 12 foot's going to hurt you because he's going to have to be in the how it rings more than that to count anyway. So uh, I think he'd be happy to split this one off, see where Mike uh, puts his next one and either have to hit or draw. We're about to find out, gang, right now. Here comes the intern, Kevin Martin. Boy, I tell you what, he wasn't outside. Outside, it's starting to move, even with that big weight. Does he get the back one or not? 
Oh, he just missed him. What a great try. He smiled. That's two that they almost picked up. You can't get much closer to perfection than Kevin Martin, but he'll take that shot. That was so close. There wasn't much between, much air between those two rods. That was a great shot, a spectacular shot. A good effort by Kevin Martin. It was a good effort by Kevin Park and a similar shot a moment ago. Now, of course, the Mike Vavrick team are going to be out there doing a little house cleaning for a long time. Make sure that nothing gets in the way of this last rock as thrown by Mike Vavrick. Well, he's going over to the side in the eight foot. I remember on the sixth end, Kevin uh, Martin uh, trying to hit and stay there, rolled out of the rings, there out of the about half out of the rings. That's where he's putting. He's not putting on the on the right on the uh, forefoot. He's taking ice, uh, so he'll draw over on the edge of the forefoot or full eight foot. Well, we know one thing: that Kevin Martin will not have what is called in curling a difficult shot to get to a second straight briar. No matter what Mike Vavrick does, he can't make this too tough for Kevin Martin, but he'll try and make it as tough as he can. Well, it's going to definitely uh, be off on uh, eight foot or edge of the four foot. It's starting to come lots now. Well, you're right. That's exactly what he's thinking about. And Kevin, the only shot he missed this game that I can remember was right there. He tried the out turn. He rolled too far. Now he comes to the back of the eight, comes to the back of the 12. Uh, he was about two or three feet a little too far of what he would like to go and Kevin is going to give him a little dose of his own medicine he's going to throw the out turn straight draw and he's got to be fully in the eight foot circle for his second straight trip to the Labatt Briar which he won in Hamilton last year and gained so much respect in doing so well you know anything can happen in one shot but this is a smart shot to play he's, he's even playing away from that rock and uh, he has drawn the forefoot twice in this game and uh, Mike Vavrick put it in a good spot it, uh, it uh, if it were stopped a foot shorter would have tempted uh, Kevin to go for it all right here comes Kevin he'd like to throw to his sweepers on this one they brush it lightly they brush it lightly they're just keeping it clean this is close Kevin thinks he's close He's close. Now he says, let's go. Let's not fool around. Let's make sure he's there. He gets across the hard line. The crowd are on their feet. It looks like he's done it. It looks like he's done it again. It comes to the front of the house. Kevin oh, Martin will go. What a tough loss for Mike Fabric. Oh, great. Oh, boy, partner. Nice shot, partner. What a great win. Oh, great shooting, guys. Great shooting. For Kevin Martin from the Avenir Curling Club. What, uh, what a tough break for him. You know, it's, it's unfortunate somebody has to lose. You can see uh, four happy players and four sad ones. And uh, this doesn't happen again until next year. And uh, Mike, his second year in a row for Mike Vavrick to lose to the same team. And uh, you have to feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> There's Kevin's good luck charm. Deja vu. <laughs> uh, all right, Jackie and Jerry have got the microphones down there, and we're Kevin, going to get we some uh, reaction. Of your time. Uh, what were you thinking going down the ice there? It's over. <laughs> I knew the draw weight. I felt really good about it. You were so close in that first one from peeling that top 12 one out. Even if he, that you did do that, I think you would have been drawing with your last one. I felt really good about the draw, and uh, it's perfect ice, so I might as well have at it. Fifth end, a big one when you just barely made that draw for one, and then the seventh end, Kevin Park comes up with two great shots. Oh, exactly. I, you know, what are you going to say? That's uh, that's the only way you're going to beat Mike Vavrick is to make those shots, and uh, and we almost didn't anyway. <laughs> These two teams are so evenly matched. It was incredible to watch. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, Jack. Two-time defending Alberta champion, the Kevin oh. Martin team. Now they're off to the Olympics, and uh, let's talk to Kevin Park now. Oh. Go, Jer. Kevin, what a great game. You, seventh end, you talked about, let's wake up, guys, and you made two great shots, and that was the turning point of the game. I felt responsible in the sixth end when I hit a, a nose on a peel and rolled over, and he eventually got a deuce out of it, so I felt it was time to shake up the crew and get that deuce back in seven, and we made some great shots there, and, and then we ran out the string, fortunately. It was a little, little hectic here in ten, but Kevin had that pin in his back pocket, so it's just great. 
Well, that's great. feel great two times. It feels even better the second time because the first time we, we weren't in any kind of pressure situation. We were up three and uh, the game we were just peeling it out, but here the pressure was on right from end number one. It's just great. You could feel it in the air. Oh yeah, just uh, electric. <laughs> <laughs> now your friends bound and then you get to come back and go to Regina. We're going to be busy boys, but uh, we're, we're certainly happy about it. It's just great. Congratulations. And standing with me, Dan Petrick. Dan, what a great feeling. Tell us, how does it feel? <laughs> it feels great, even though, oh boy, I'm... But that's what skips are for, isn't it? To bail you out when you bonk that 10th end, ten end peel? <laughs> I must I don't know when's the last time I had one of those, but today is the last time, so... Um, but it's great. I mean, I, I figured the skipper... Skipper has draw weight, you know, and... Uh, uh, well, it's... Uh, all you had to do is hit full eight, and... And we did it in the Skins game, and we did it here, so I had good confidence we were still going to make the shot. Well, congratulations, and best of luck in the Labatt Briar. Oh, thanks a lot. And now we're going to go to a highlight. Of what we're yeah, what we were trying to do was trying to find uh, Mike Vavrick, and he is making his way over here. And uh, just come on in, Mike. Mike... Uh, and another incredible game. You two teams, we were just saying, are so evenly matched, and uh, it came down to probably the seventh end there. Oh, for sure. We just a couple of bad breaks, and uh, maybe my first one curls a little too much, and my second one hangs out, and, and that was perhaps the game. Did you turn the first one in a bit? Did you feel, or just did it go? No, I think it caught a little bit of uh, Kevin's broom there, and, and uh, then we didn't, didn't take... Uh, think there was going to be any straw out there so we took the same ice and thought we'd get the nose and it did stay straighter than my first one. Well uh, from everyone here at the Leduc Curling Club a great showing you guys started out slow but you came on strong so close again and and uh, we know you'll be back you're a great team. Thanks Jackie. Mike Vavrick of Sexsmith uh, another incredible game Kevin Martin wins another Alberta championship he will be going to the Briar in Regina now let's take a look back at this great week we had here in Leduc
Boom, back to the original shot. Let's see if it works. It's kind of an interesting shot. He's going to try and split those two rocks, and he says the shooter oh. rock will continue right through the hole oh, and end up out of play. It's not going to work good in Charleston. Oh. Well, it almost worked. He got the two. I mean, it can't get much better than that. It didn't do what he had called, but I'm sure he'll take it. And Kevin wisely kicks that rock back that I don't he's going to hit on. And... What do you think, Mike? I don't know. What do you want to do about that one? I don't know. Well, we have no... I don't know. What do you think? It happens so quick, eh? Hey? It's hard to see. Oh, okay, yeah. I tried to get that thing yeah. like, I know up out of the way. I think Kevin did the right what thing. What do you he think? Was right there. Where do you think? No, it had to go the other way. Like, obviously, a bunch of stuff happened. It stayed right there and then it off the board. Yeah. It wouldn't have to be pretty well where it should be strong. Huh? No, no, no. Barclay's even putting it more. Impossible. No, I won't agree with that one, for sure not. No, we won't let that one go. Not a chance. No, 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 no. no. Not in a million years would have done that. <laughs> Impossible. I was standing here, too. You're the one that kicked it. Oh, maybe we'll see the first fight here. Our rock kicked that one down there, and it wasn't it. But I never even looked at that. It's a tough one because Dave Tibbs didn't see it. Rock by the last rock by Kevin Martin puts him and his buddies back into yet another briar, the briar that they won last year in Hamilton. They will now go to Regina for the briar in March. We're just waiting for the official opening ceremonies. And the Martin Rink, you can tell them they're the ones laughing and giggling. You can tell the Mike Vavrick Rink, they're the ones with tears in their eyes. Well, that always happens every year. There's somebody winning and somebody losing, but boy, two evenly matched teams we didn't see than we did today. Uh, unfortunately for Mike Gravick, the second year in a row, and uh, losing to a, a good team. The percentages were so close, 89% to 88% uh, team averages, and that's very high. If uh, they keep playing this way, it's going to be a tough briar for anybody else. It was one of those games that the losers really didn't do anything wrong. No, exactly right. It was, uh, it was just, it's an incredible game to lose. I can, I've been in Vavrick's shoes and I've been in Martin's shoes. And <laughs> one feels great and the other feels pretty horrible. All right, here comes the traditional bagpipes. And the game officials. Bob Walker from Calgary, the head of promotions for Labatt who means so much to curling, not only in our neck of the woods, but right across the country. And he's followed by Shirley Douglas, some other dignitary, Shirley, the president of this fine LeDuc Curling Club. Darwin Davidek in the lineup. What a week he had. What a week for curling. What a week curling had this week. What a great job that Shaw Cable did. A great curling put on by the competitors. The hospitality, the organization. Pretty tough to top this one. But they'll try and do it again next year in Calgary. And as we mentioned on our telecast, Hector was so successful this week uh, that they have already decided they're going to go ahead with the round robin format again next week. Well, well they uh, couldn't have drawn it any better. Uh, five teams out of eight were still in the playoff, chance to win the Alberta after the round robin, and uh, 
Boy, Mike Graverick uh, just gave it such a great try. He had to play two playoff games and then the semifinal and then losing a tough game today on last rock. Well, you know, it's tough to get back in that situation again, to put yourself in that situation. Uh, it was tough for Kevin Martin. He wanted to get back to the Briar, wanted to win it again, wanted to win that elusive world championship. It's eluded him at the junior level. He got all the way to one game in the junior competition, all the way in the men's competition, and uh, finished second both times. So he's continues on in his search for the elusive world championship. Mike Maverick, once again, finishing second in the provincial championship, but he's got a young rink. I mean, they're quite capable of coming right back and being here again next year with another chance. Well, he'll be here a lot of years from the Trivial. He's a young man now. Curlers, Listen in ladies here. and gentlemen, it has been a glorious six days of curling and festivities, and we now welcome you to join us in the closing ceremonies. My name is Ken McRae, and it's my pleasure at this time to introduce our dignitaries. We would ask each to wave in recognition. Bob Walker, representing Labatt's. <laughs> Eric Bungard, president of Alberta Curling Federation. <laughs> Darwin Davidick, president of Northern Alberta Curling Association and championship chairman. <laughs> Murray Gummer, Peace Curling Association. <laughs> Pauline McGregor, Southern Alberta Curling Association. <laughs> Shirley Douglas, Leduc Curling Club. <laughs> Could we have the teams brought forward at this time, please? The provincial runner-up from Grand Prairie, Skip Michael Babrick. <laughs> Third, Kurt Balderston. <laughs> Second, Ralph Brust. Lead Daniel Lemieux. <laughs> and our provincial champions for the second straight year, Skip Kevin Martin. <laughs> Third, Kevin Park. Second, Dan Petrick. <laughs> and lead, Don Bartlett from Edmonton, Alberta. <laughs> to the curlers, we thank you for a thrill-packed week. Only one team advances to the Briar, but we had eight winning teams here this week. It is the dream of every curler to play in the provincial championships, and any one of the competing teams would have represented us well at the Briar. We thank you for your display of talent, and especially for your sportsmanship. Your conduct made things easy for official Dave Tibbs and his crew. To the fans in the arena and to the thousands who have watched on Shaw Cable, we thank you for your support. Without a doubt, this has been the largest audience ever to view a provincial championship. We congratulate Shaw Cable and volunteers and our announcers, Wes, Heck, Jackie, and Jerry. <laughs> we also thank Darwin for his vision of a Briar format. The spectators loved it, and curling has reached many new fans. To our 120 volunteers who did themselves proud this week, we thank you for a job well done. <laughs> you average 60 hours each 
and there were no freebies for your efforts. You even had to buy your own sweaters to get in. The effort you put forth was given due to your love for the game and your pride in your community. We all owe you a big round of applause and we ask you to stay for pictures after the ceremonies are closed. <laughs> to the Northern Alberta Curling Association's Honorary President Wes Montgomery, we express our gratitude for the many tasks you carried out during this week. You and your team of Gil Stenson and Marv Schmidt got the event started in the right direction by delivering the ceremonial first rock onto the button. Just to ensure, Wes, that you remain a little humble, we'd like to remind you that on that same sheet of ice you gave up an eight-ender a few years ago. <laughs> it is my pleasure at this time to call on Bob Walker to bring closing remarks from Labatt's. Bob? Thank you, Ken. What a great week this has been. We've had some exciting curling in a tremendous facility hosted by some very dedicated volunteers. Our thanks go out to all of you involved with the 1992 Alberta Labatt Tankard. Labatt's is very proud to be a major sponsor of the sport of curling, and we certainly appreciate the support that all of you have shown us. There are far too many people to thank individually, but I would like to single out Darwin Davidak and the organizing committee of volunteers without whom events like this simply cannot happen. <laughs> then there's Al Miller and his staff here at the Leduc Curling Club, who took care of everyone so very well. And last, but certainly not least, are the eight teams that entertained us all week. Thank you all for contributing to a world-class event. And now, on with the presentations. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. At this time, Bob will present plaques to the runner-up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, The Vavrik team from, from the Peace Country who put on a great display the last two years and I'm sure there's going to be better things for them in the future. Bob will now present the winners with the coveted Purple Hearts and Tankards. Bob. The winners are now presented with the championship banner on behalf of Labatt's. Bob? I now call on Eric Bungard, president of the Alberta Curling Federation, for closing remarks. Eric. Thanks, Ken. And thank you, LeDuc, for a wonderful championship. We had some controversy or concern at the beginning that the round robin format was not the way to go. I think everyone will agree that we had an exciting week. <laughs> for your information, we'll be using the same format in Calgary next year. The 
Martin team, I'm sure, will represent as well in the Olympics, in the Briar, and probably the Worlds. Good luck, good luck, Kevin. Thanks, Eric. And at this time, we'd last ask Eric to present the champion provincial crests, pins, and jackets. Thanks, Eric. We'll now call on Kevin Martin, the winning skip, to say a few words. Kevin. Thank you very much. First and foremost, I think uh, we've got to give a round of applause again to Shaw Cable, Hector West, Jerry, Jackie. They did an unbelievable job for this week. I think it's going to really uh, snowball into something great. To all the volunteers who did all the work here uh, in the last week, this was by far the best provincials ever, uh, hands down, and I think it's just going to get better as we go. Also, of course, automatic thanks to Labatt's uh, for their sponsorship in the great sport curling is, and also Pepsi uh, on behalf of our team and, of course, with the playdowns. I can't uh, let everybody leave without, of course, acknowledging our own sponsors who make this, uh, who have made this year possible for us to do the traveling that we've done. And that's, of course, a good friend of mine, Terry Royer in UAP Napa Auto Parts in Western Canada. Also, somebody that's a little biased, obviously, is Thompson Broom Curling. <laughs> yeah, uh, not here. And uh, who else are sponsors? Yeah. I guess that's it. That's it. Good. Perfect. Thanks a lot, and uh, hopefully we can uh, do you proud in Regina. Making his acceptance speech. Thanks, You've Kevin. You've been there before. My final uh, I've been on both sides of it. The West I uh, was in the provincial ten times, won it uh, four times, and uh, boy, there's a different feeling uh, when you uh, lose in the final of a provincial uh, and such a tough game for Mike uh, Vavrick, you uh, just feel sorry for him, and I'm sure it's going to take a while for him to get over that. Uh, he's going to wonder why he didn't win. You know, they're so evenly matched. Well, he was young, and he'll be back, and the whole team, the oldest member of the team, Dan Lemieux, the lead, is 31 years of age, and they are outstanding curlers, and I'm sure they'll be back. And Kevin Martin, he won the Briar last year. He, he came within one game of winning the World Championship. They're on a roll again. They're going to have to beat this kid and his young rink in Regina. Well, you know, he didn't doesn't say much about the loss in the world, but... Unless you win that world, it seems like media don't uh, recognize you as well as uh, they, although the briar is the biggest thing I think there is yet, but it's, uh, he'll do us well. All right, old friend, I enjoyed working with you. It's time for you to get back to the Avonair Curling Club and coaching your team, the Deb Shermack team, and their quest for their fourth provincial ladies curling championship. Good luck to you. And it's time for me to get ready for Drayton Valley in their men's field. And on behalf of Hector, on behalf of Jackie Ray Greening, on behalf of Jerry Wilson and Shaw Cable, good afternoon from the Leduc Curling Club.
Alberta Curling Association is proud to host the 1992 Alberta Labatt Tankard. The NACA provides the following services to the curlers in northern Alberta. Management of playdowns, promotion of curling, education in the sport, administration functions. NACA, a curling tradition since 1918. Pepsi is a proud sponsor of the Alberta Tankard, and 1992 marks the 35th year of Pepsi support for curling in Canada, including the Pepsi Juniors from provincial and territorial playdowns, right up to the national championships being held this year in Vernon, B.C. This is the longest-running corporate sponsorship in any amateur sport in Canada. In 1992, Pepsi is also a proud sponsor of Team Canada, who will compete in Albertville, France. Pepsi, gotta have it.